Hello everyone! Happy Friday, chat! How goes? How goes everybody's day? Thank you to Angel of Pain for the eight months, John at Dawn for the four months, Mohihiko Mohi for the four months, Gorb cannot die! Jorgen Hell for the 28 months. Greetings, Joe Cat. Can't stick around for too long, but good luck with the stream. Thank you. And Player 2 Jack for the 30 months. Two and a half years. Wow. But yeah, welcome. Today we're going to be replaying through the MSQ because um, there are some things that I kind of missed because my. My experience with 14's MSQ is a mixed and unique one. Um, not mixed in terms of quality, but like weird. It's very weird. I'm currently working on a video right now about how my, my experience with the MSQ um, in terms of how I got through it. Uh, but now that I am hooked by it and into it and everything, I wanted to replay through it to just kind of recap the story for myself and also uh, recap the story for people who are interested but don't, you know, aren't able to play this game because it is a subscription. Starting at level one, not quite. I'm gonna be going through New Game Plus. But um, before that, I'm also I'm gonna be making a character because New Game Plus doesn't actually start you at the very, very beginning. Um, but yeah, it's also gonna be an excuse for me to kind of role-play my character through the story as well, because this is a role-playing game. Do you accept in-game gifts? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. The SSL cert on your website needs updating? I'll do that sometime. It's a lot of back-end to Heaven's Word, like there is the ARR story. Yes, every every MS, uh, every expansion story has like a post story to wrap up loose ends and set up the next expansion essentially but uh yeah let's um let's stop this music that that was uh one hero's journey which is a medley with a bunch of uh spoilers in in it so careful if you go to listen to that by calico on youtube so yes let us begin not by playing the game but by watching the opening cinematic to a realm reborn, shall we? And I'm also going to be throwing in some commentary as time goes on as well. Maybe some analysis. That sort of stuff, talking about the story. Let me know how the audio sounds, by the way. Amid azure seas, encompassing the westernmost of the three great continents, there lies a realm embraced by gods and forged by heroes. Her name, Aeorzea. Sounds pretty good. The annals of Aeorzean history chart the rise Cut of a little quiet. I'll turn it up. great civilizations, each one enjoying an age of peace. How's that sound? The astral eras. To date, all have proven ephemeral. What's really interesting is seeing this back, like, in retrospect, a lot of this originally sounded like fantasy battle. In the year 1572, but now, knowing what I know now, it's like, wow, era, all of this is, makes sense the Northern and Empire was set up. Gallimold amassed a great army at the heart of Eorzea, seeking dominion over all. Rising in desperate resistance, the forces of the Eorzean Alliance met their would-be conquerors in the field. Yet, even as the battle raged, the lesser moon, Dalamo, was plucked from the heavens through imperial machination. From its core emerged the elder primal Bahamut, who unleashed his fury upon the realm. Yeah, because so far this is like, you know, what makes this different from any other fantasy story setup. 
The devastation brought Eorzea to its knees and the era to its end. Well, one, the meta, the meta story that this was the end of 1.0 and how they shut down the servers and tied it into the lore. But without that meta context, you know, this is, this could be any fantasy story. Yeah, it's just exposition. Five years have come and gone. The light of life still shines upon Eorzea. Man labors tirelessly to raise himself from the color. So this is from the very start. Yep, we're gonna be. I'm gonna make a level one character briefly, and we're gonna start new game plus, going the from the very beginning. Changed, a stranger to him once more. Yet heedless of what lies So you joined ahead, at the perfect time, and this is going to be every Friday. New Game Plus? Yeah, you can, re you can replay through the main story quest, which really goes to show how much they believe in it, you know? How much they believe in its quality and it, how worth playing it is. Change, an adventurer arrives in Eorzea, one whose tale is yet unwritten. Yeah, with an existing character, yeah. May he ever walk in the light of the crystal. Hmm. I wonder if you have a female character, he goes, may she walk in the light of the crystal. Oops. Uh, we're gonna watch the Realm Reborn opening demo and title. Will I do a VOD? Yeah, this will be on the VOD channel. So this was the end of 1.0. Feeling rested after Lunacon? Absolutely. Yes, very much so. That is the Red Moon Dalamud, which has been keeping an Elder Primal named Bahamut in there for a long time. And we'll learn more about how all that works later on. Sunshi, thank you for the five gifts of subs. Wow, thank you so much. I'll read those all off after uh, this is finished, because I think this is worth paying attention to. Yeah, there's Gridania. God, seeing all of this back now. leaders yeah answers give, yeah answers was being played at the end of 1.0 everyone was just in game and there was an echoing version of this song playing just ominously Am I a 1.0 player? No, I wish. I think I started playing around the time Heaven's Word came out. Technically, I only started getting into the game, like, in the past year. they weren't. I don't know if that's true, because the 1.0 legacy players get a lot of love. They have their name in the end credits. They get a legacy chocobo. They get a, a exclusive back tattoo on their character. They're regularly referenced in cutscenes and dialogue. Yeah, legacy players get a cheaper sub for life. Yeah. Square Enix uh, takes care of the le their legacy players.
was a previous Umbral Calamity Fire Elemental based. I think this one is unaspected. Like, there's a lot of fire going around, but this one was just in a non-elemental end of the world. And you will find out why later. Like, even though it looks like a lot of fire, I think what it technically is is just the absence of ether. Which, if you don't know, ether is life force. And this is literally just sucking life force out of everything. In the form of explosions, I guess. This is an umbral aspect of No, no, no. There, no, not this one. At least I don't think so. Because that's the world of darkness. The darkness was dark aspected. That's why that world is a world of darkness. Here's them praying to the very to the twelve. Trying to seal Bahamut once again. And you can see the symbols of the 12 gods, look. Like, those are the gods that you pick when you create your character. Trying to seal Bahamut, and even they weren't enough. And yes, this is Louis Swa. I like to nickname him Elf Jesus, because he died for our sins. Yep, everyone's in shock because even the 12's power was not enough to seal Bahamut. And so he said, let's teleport everyone into the future, after the world is ended. And this is five years later. And that's, uh... No, no, no. Later, we'll see. I love this scene. Just all the company chocobos riding alongside each other. There's a Maelstrom chocobo. There's some Flames chocobos. There's an Adder chocobo right there that the Lalafell, another Flames chocobo. Another Adder chocobo. Those were Warriors of Light. The ones fighting in the battlefield, yes. And you'll see what happened to them later. Lim's a best starting city? Uh, nah, Gridania. Although I do think Ulda is the best starting city for story reasons, and you'll see why. I'm gonna be saying that a lot. <laughs> you'll see why later. Were the Scions sent to the, into the future as well? Yep. Just about everyone. Just about everyone aside from the Garlean Empire, I'm pretty sure. What brought up the replay? The Urge? Yeah, the Urge, and also to recap the story for myself and anybody else who wishes to, you know, see the story. Ah, uh, the Crystal Tower. And there they are, the Warriors of Light. And you actually got a cutscene like this with your character if you were a legacy player. When you created your character, you didn't initially ride in on a carriage like everybody else. You got beamed in. Yep, and you also got this, which is a legacy chocobo these things with a with a unique description that it said the chocobo has been wandering the world for five years in search of its master and a tattoo on its beak yeah there we go realm reborn
I think Jesus only teleported the warriors on the battlefield. Maybe. I'm pretty sure he teleported all the, uh, the innocent people in Aorzi as well. How long am I going to stream? Probably like four or five hours. I get the carriage ride? Well, that's because you weren't a legacy player. You didn't play 1.0. Only players who... Only players with characters who played in 1.0 get the special cutscene. But uh, we are not a 1.0 player. So, um... Yeah, let's... Now, I already have a character, and I will be playing New Game Plus with him. But before I do, because you don't actually... New Game Plus doesn't actually start you at the very, very beginning. So, we're gonna make a new character. Go. And there we go, there he is, Victor Quibbles. He's going to be our hero for this adventure. Mm -hmm. And his birthday is going to be my birthday, which is this one, April 30th. Mm -hmm. And his god is Menfina. Menfina is the keeper of the moon and the goddess of love. She commands the elements of ice and is associated with the second moon of the Orzian calendar. Menfina is the sister of Azima and the divine lover of Oceon. She is most often depicted as a maid carrying a round skillet. Her symbol is the full moon. I like moon stuff, you know. And whenever I make Rat, Rat was my first D&D character. Um, his full name is Victor Quibbles. Um, I often like to associate him with moon stuff. You know, the moon kite circus. Uh, he's got a moon on his sword. No, it's just flavor. This is all roleplay stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make him a gladiator, i.e. sword and shield. Uh, gladiators specialize, and, you know, you can see the job clothes. This turns into paladin. They just started out as, like, these classes instead of jobs and stuff. Gladiators specialize in the handling of all manner of one-handed blades, from daggers to long swords. You don't actually get any daggers. Be they single or double-edged, straight or curved, swords. A defining characteristic of the art is its emphasis on the diverse combat, uh, on diverse combat tactics, training its members to bring their martial skills to bear in any situation. As such, there are practitioners who marry sword with shield. Yeah. Uh, seeking to defend their fellow companions, others opt for an empty offhand, choosing instead to focus entirely on their sword arm. In all instances, uh, the ages-old art of the sword makes a gladiator a formidable adversary in any encounter. And we will be starting in Ulda as a result of choosing the gladiator. The bustling Commercia hub of Ulda. Hold on, you can't see that. The bustling commercial hub of Ulda sits amid the desolate desert landscape of southern Aldenard. Uh, Aldenard is the continent that Eorzea is on. There's going to be a lot of names that aren't going to make sense. Uldan culture is known for its affluence, and its wealth of the nation comes in large part from its abundant material resources and cloth craft industry. Though it is the Sultana who claims sovereignty, True power is wielded by the Syndicate, a council sat by six of Uldah's most elite and influential. Noldthal is the nation's patron deity, and two great halls devoted to his two aspected, uh, aspects lie in the east and west of the city. So it's ruled by the rich. Yeah. Alright. Um, yeah. Sorry about the thing. All right. We shall start there. And uh, let's... Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. We can't start in Brynhildur because there's already Victor Quibbles there. And this character will be quickly deleted later. So we're going to make a Victor Quibbles in Diablos. <laughs> and here we go. Uh, there's a cue time. Okay. Which is better, a gigantic blade wielded in one hand with a tiny buckler in the other, or an immense tower shield in one hand and a tiny dirk, tiny dirk in the other? Why not both? Yeah, I won't be staying in Diablos for long. This is just to play the, uh, the, the opening and the intro.
Panna Cotton, thank you for the five months. Uh, Honey Bits, thank you for subscribing. Grim Rude, thank you for subscribing. And Bushman is watching, thank you for the bits. As well as Fenric Drake, thank you for the bits as well. Crystals DC, the most popular of the three NA centers? I don't know. Here. Feel. In full level 50 gear. Sword and shield, baby! <laughs> it's him, antagonist Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, he's, he's very antagonist evil man McGee. <laughs> Evil McDoobad. Hey! Hey, you! I'm gonna have to increase the size of that as well. That text box, it's kind of small. <gasps> hey, Alflops! You alright, lad? You were moaning something fierce for a while there. Feeling the effects of the ether, I reckon. You'll get used to it, though, don't worry. Ah, you're finally awake. You're caught going across the border there, along with that horse thief. You there, Holt! What's this all about? Inspection, men, search the carriage. Yep, and then we get to see... I love this, because this really sh gives a great first impression of Uldah's corruption. I'm just an honest peddler friend, so uh, don't be too disappointed if you don't find nothing, eh? Mind your tongue, old man, lest I cut it out. Look, sir, Somnus! Honest peddler, was it? Since when do honest peddlers deer and prohibited herbs? You're in a lot of trouble, old man. You'll rot in a dungeon till the end of your days, unless you can afford the fine. Heh, <laughs> business as usual. Ah! Amalja! Amalja! Two arms! Two arms! Oh, here they are. A sign of things to come. Seven else, consider this a warning. Now go, all of you. <laughs> Agab, all guards are bad. Oh, fuck, he just got thrown. I love that it shows that these guards are competent, too. He, he cuts one down. Look at that. Phew, that kind of excitement ain't good for the heart. You be careful around them brass blades, lad. 
bastards will have your have their shirt off your back if they fancy it. Like common bandits they are, only less honest. Thank the gods for sending some beastmen to the rescue, eh? Hey, seeing as we've got a long ride ahead, you mind keeping me company till we arrive? Them young'uns don't much care for conversation, see? Oh. Brent's the name, and Petlin's my trade. And judging by our usual garments, I'd wager you're one of them new adventurers. Victor Quibbles, nice to meet you. I knew it. Going wherever the wind blows, seeking fortune and glory. Now that's what I call living. So long as you can avoid dying, I mean. Ain't no secret that adventuring's a risky business, these days especially. What was it that first attracted you to it? Ah, our first choice. Hmm. I like money. Hello, I like money. Fortune, eh? <laughs> then I reckon you'll fit right in where we're going. Once you've learned to handle yourself in a fight, you'll want to pay visit to whichever crafting or gathering guild tickles your fancy. That is more accurate than you think. And there's plenty to choose from, too. Whether it be weaving, alchemy, goldsmithing, or mining that interests you, Ulta's got a place where you can learn your trade. Adventuring ain't just about killing things, after all. A peaceful pastime may well help you make your fortune. Just remember, though, there are more important things than fortune and glory, such as breathing. Ain't no profit in being dead, and that's a fact. By the by, is this your first trip to Ulda? We're gonna say yes. This is Victor's story. Is it? Well then, this is the this uh, let this journey itinerant tell you the ins and outs of your destination. Uldaz ruled by the Sultana in name, but as most folk know, the Syndicate hold all the real power. Them and their monetarist cronies would be happily get rid of her grace altogether, but that won't happen while she still commands the loyalty of the Royalists, and the Royalists are nothing if not loyal. These factions have long fought for power, throwing the weight of their wealth against each other, and they show no signs of stopping. Of course, the Lizardmen, that's the Amalja, couldn't care less about Old Don politics. They have their own interests, see, and they ain't afraid to use force to serve them. They say war is a gift to peddlers. Need breed and profit. Uh, need breed and profit. And though it shames me to say, I'm inclined to agree. That is true, war, may, war has a lot of profit in it. Ah, at long last. Behold, Hulda. Jewel of Thanalan, where folks turn sand into gold. Deep in the sun-baked south, surrounded by the shifting sands of an endless desert, she rises, a solitary rose amidst the dust and rock, a symbol of defiance. Her name, Ulda. That oh, looks pretty rocky to me. Even with the coming of the seventh umbral era, hope springs eternal for the mongers and merchants who vie for lost fortunes in this bustling oasis. As the twin faces of Nald Thal maintain their vigil over all that has been and shall be, the present proffers a brave soul. One whose arrival could mark the beginning of a new era of prosperity for the realm. Mm. I gotta say, though, in terms of overworld, Ulda is probably my least favorite, just because deserts are kind of hard to make interesting, in my opinion. Uh, and this one is not very much so. But it's all right. In terms of story, I kind of like it. And here's where we part ways, lad. 
I'm off to the markets to deliver me wares, and it's on to the high road for me. <gasps> There's the twins. Here, I want you to have this, by way of thanks for putting up with me prattle. <gasps> Money! You never did tell me your name, though. Hey, but here's an idea. Become the sort of storied personage I can brag about having met, and I'll consider a square. You got it. What an interesting guy. May the traders we'll nurture again. our fortunes as they kindle the flames which burn within us all. For by fire are we reborn. Yeah, it's more dirt than sand. There it is. Final Fantasy XIV. Can you New Game Plus a different starting area? Nope. In fact, you don't even get this segment when you New Game Plus. You start at the first, like, real quest. There it is. I like to consider Uldah to sort of be the capital of Eorzea, in a way. Big city, riches. Oi, adventure! Over here. <gasps> it's Wymond! I, I mean you. Fresh off the carriage by any chance, hey? How can I tell? <laughs> Name's Wyman, and my business is knowing every bugger else's. Now then, if I were to offer you some invaluable advice by way of welcoming, uh, welcome to our fair city, free of charge even, just this once, like. Now, the downside of starting an Uldah is that two of the Scions don't get nearly as m much fleshed out. It's a shame as well, like, um, that you don't get as much time with them that you kind of need to start in another area. But I do think starting an Uldah makes the most sense narratively, as you will find out later. Welcome to Uldah, the shining beacon of prosperity. Uh, there we go. Rising from the deserts of Thanalan. Uh, please... Select the control scheme you wish to use. Uh, mouse and keyboard, please. Blah, 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 yep. I know how to play, and first things first. We're gonna change this to legacy type. There we go. Because I'm not a heathen. Hello, Wyman. You recognize as an adventurer in the city-state of Old Da, you must register yourself with the Adventurer's Guild. Game is a bit loud. I'll turn it down. Sorry about that. Tis plain to anyone with eyes that you don't know your way around here. If I let you go wandering off down the nearest dark alley, you're certain to get mugged or worse, and I don't want that on my conscience. So before you do anything else, you'll want to head over to the quicksand and speak to Mamodi. She's the master of the Adventurer's Guild and can set you on the right path. Just take those steps over yonder and pass through the double doors. You'll find her inside. And that's as much as you're getting for free. Good luck with adventure and adventure. Man, everyone's trying to make a profit over here, are they? All right, I turned the game down a little bit. How does that sound for everybody? Wee, wee. Sounds fine, all right, cool. Into the quicksand, the most populated part of Balmung. Is this just a new character? Yeah, but I'll quickly be going to back to my original character and playing a new game plus. Why, hello there! Who might you be? If you're looking to join the Adventures Guild, you've come to, come to the right place. Name's Mamodi, and I own this fine establishment, if it please you. 
I also manage the Adventurers Guild here in Uldar. So you might say that looking after green adventures like yourself is my vocation. And lucky for you, that is. Without someone like me to steer you right, you'd find yourself out in the middle of nowhere, caught in business you don't understand. Mamodi Bessin Keeper, uh, Mother Mion would like to disagree. <laughs> like our conflicts with the Amalja, for example. They've been plaguing the Sultanate for nigh, oh, ah, forever now. Then there's the Garlean Empire. No one can say for sure what they're plotting these days, only that they are. Aye, the people drink and make merry, but underneath it all, there's worry. Worry and lingering fear and feeling of loss. And little wonder, it's scarce been five years since the lesser moon cracked open like a giant egg, releasing an abomination intent on turning the realm into the eighth hell. So much was lost in the blink of an eye. T'was like the end of the world had come at last. But then things begin to get foggy. Everyone's got their own version of what happened next. Some of them, two or three. You'd think people would remember something like that, but the fact is, they don't. Nobody does. There is one thing the survivors agree on, though. The part played by a band of adventurers who laid down their lives for a realm that wasn't their own. They fought valiantly, and like so many others, they never t returned. Deeds worth remembering, I'm sure you'll agree. It's just a shame our recollections of those brave heroes are jumbled as those of the Calamity itself. Whenever we try to recall their faces to mind, it's like they're standing between us and the midday sun, permanently silhouetted. I'll bet that sounds poetic to you, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It's bloody infuriating. But even if we can't remember them, we'll not let, let them be forgotten. And so we call them the Warriors of Light. And they'll forever stand as a shining example of what adventurers can achieve. And why I welcome new arrivals like yourself into our fair city. All I ask is that you lend a helping hand and try to leave Uldar in a better state than you found her. If you can promise that, I'd happily let to let you join the guild. You got it. Got a mop and a broom for me? All right then, a promise is a promise now. I'm counting on your help to put the past behind us. We'll need people working. Oh my God, is that, what's his face? Ilbert? No. Right? No? Yeah? Nah, yeah, okay, no. I thought his face kind of looked Ilbert-esque. I'm counting on your help to put the past behind us. We'll need people working and speeding and bickering like the old days. Spending, sorry. It's just the hair, gotcha. And a happy and prosperous Uldar means more business for the quicksand, too. Ilbert have white hair? Ah, that's right, he does have white hair. Anyway, let's make this official. Go ahead and write your name in this register. Neat as you can. Ooh, also, I would like to ask chat to try your best not to spoil uh, the rest of the story. You know, no spoilers in the chat for anybody experiencing this for the first time in case they're just watching the playthrough. You know, just be respectful for spoilers. No context, please. Aw, Illuminamas. Thank you for the bits. Victor Quibbles. Oh, ain't that a charming name? Just rolls off the tongue. It does. Oh, you, oh, you say that. All right, Mr. Quibbles. On behalf of the Adventurers Guild, I officially... Please, sir, be merciful. Uh, Twelve is my witness, I swear to you. I bring you your money. In the East, it is said that even a merciful god might be driven to vengeance if thrice blasphemed. Be grateful you were given a fourth chance to offend. You two, attend to this scum. Oh, God. No, oh, please, mercy. Oh, looks like Sokka kind of messed with the wrong group. Well, ain't that a sorry sight? Nor an uncommon one, if I'm honest. Don't worry, though. If you work hard, I doubt you'll end up like him. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna help him or anything? We're just gonna let him get beat up by those goons? All right, great. Just the very same, if you ever need a bit of advice about 
one thing or another. Pay me a visit. Just don't go bothering me every time you stub your bloody toe, all right? <laughs> Pussy Destroyer. Pussy Slayer 69. Really rolls off the tongue. Of course, I do enjoy hear and tell of a gentleman's woes with the women folk from time to time. Ah, uh, you and me both. Any road, welcome to Uldar, Victor. Take a moment to catch your breath, and I'll teach you a little about our fair city. Alright. Momodi's mean? Oh yeah, she's mean. Yeah. Stacy, you started in Gridania, and Mother Mion is so nice and pleasant. Mother Mi Mama Mion sounds like a MILF. Oh, you have no idea. Alright. Level 2. Uh, what city did you start with the first time? I think I started in Gridania the first time I played, and then I lost my account information and forgot it, so I made a new account, and then I started in Uldah. Before you go charging off to, to find your fortune, I have a few basic tasks I would like you to perform, uh, so as to help you get to know the place. First of all, I want you to visit the Aetherite Plaza. To get there, head west, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it weren't for the Aetherites, travel around Eorzea would be damn sight more troublesome than it is. Of course, you still need to attune to them before you can use them. Yeah, so... Yeah, attuning to Aetherites teaches you how to teleport. When you've done that, I'd want you to pay, pay visit to the Gladiators Guild over at the Colosseum. Assuming that sword ain't just for show, you might consider training there. And finally, I want you to visit the Sapphire Avenue Exchange over to the Steps of Thor. Goods from all Eorzea and beyond turn up there every day. You'll have no trouble finding armor, weapons, or anything else a fledgling adventurer like yourself might need. You might say that everything's for sale here in Uldar, as long as you've got the guild. Just make sure you don't pay more than you ought, Victor. There's plenty as won't scruple to, squind uh, scruple to swindle unsuspecting foreigners like yourself, especially if they think no one's looking out for their best interests. Which is why I'm giving you this letter. When you visit the exchange, find a gentleman named Cesaroga and give it to him. He'll be happy to tell you about the markets once he's he blah, 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 once he's read it. Sussaroga. That's got to be another Lalafell, right? In short, visit the Etherite Plaza, the Gladiators Guild, and the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. Simple. Oh, but before, before you go, a word of advice. While there's more than a few unsavory characters out who will try and take advantage of you, there's also some with an honest-to-goodness problems who you should consider offering a helping hand to. A lot of folk are lured to the city by the promise of wealth and power, but many of them fail to realize that instead of chasing after Gil the moment they get here, they ought to be making friends. Let it be known that you are willing to give as much as you get, and opportunities will come your way. Speaking of which, you should speak to the smith over yonder. These lads always have some good advice for up-and-coming adventures. Otherwise, that's about it for me. It's past your time you get going. Oh, let me know when you're finished, will you? That way I won't be spending my days worrying that you're down to your small clothes without a gill to your name. <laughs> oh, man. We're gonna have to dance in our loins for coin. Everything? So I can buy a love life here? <laughs> I said it was for sale. I didn't say you could afford it. <laughs> yep. I think they call it the girlfriend experience. Here we go. Let's hide the chat to be respectful. All right. Now in Ulda proper. Let's see. I can't quite remember which quest begins the first um the first like new game plus quest i guess i'll know it when i get there yeah i'm not being mobbed i'm a fairly small 14 person so i didn't expect to get mobbed really and this is not my first time playing the game why are Victor's fingers broken? Because he's a cat boy and he's curled them, curling them like a cat. I think that's just their natural state, you know. 
mobbed. Oh yeah, streamers uh, tend to get mobbed because it's an MMO. Hail, adventurer. Might you have come at the behest of Miss Mamodi of the Quicksand? Yeah, one thing about Uldah, there's a lot of uh, Lalafell here. Excellent, which brings us to the matter of attuning f uh, the attuning fee. That will be 100,000 gil, if you please, sir. Oh. <laughs> oh, you stupid idiot. But I do relish the opportunity to make the jest. The look on your face was absolutely priceless. Ah, but the fact that you were so easily deceived suggests to me that you are unfamiliar with the use of etherites. Allow me to explain, you dumb bastard. These crystalline agglomerations tap into the ethereal energies and are primarily used as a means to travel swiftly from one place to another. Perchance you have heard of return and teleport? Well, these transportation spells make direct use of the etherites and their connections to the flow of ether. Given that there is an etherite in almost every corner of Eorzea, any adventurer with a mind to explore the realm will wish to seek out and attune himself to each and every one. But even if you have no intention of wandering beyond the Sultana, Sult, uh, Sultanate's borders, it would be prudent for you to attune yourself to any etherite you encounter from now on. I pray you found that informative. Should you wish to learn more about etherites or transportation magic, I should be happy to answer your questions. Where's my Catboy Town? I don't think there is one. I guess... Gridania? Yeah, there isn't really a, a Makote-focused city, because, like... I don't know, maybe Limza? Limza is like a lot of Rogadin. Um, Gridania is a lot of Elizin, and this place is a lot of Lala Lalafell. Yeah, Gridania is a mix of Elizin and cats. Yeah, there you go. Where's Milf Town? Milf Town is Gridania. That's, uh, it's the forest village with all the elves and racism and xenophobia. Is there any city with Alviera? Yes, three expansions from now. There's a Makote settlement in southern Thanalan? Yeah, I guess so. Because uh, that, that expansion is when they introduced Viera into the game. But they've been, like, retconning the, the new races into areas. Like, I think um, they put some... Oh, hey, it's Sammy. Brachizoid, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hmm? You got something to ask about the guild? Is that it? Oh, wait. I need to talk to... Hello. Welcome to the Gladiators Guild. Yep. Gladiators use sword and shield. We don't need to read about this. This is all fine and good. Alright, well, uh, what'll it be? Will you rise above the masses and inscribe your name in legend, or will you resign yourself to mediocrity and die in obscurity? For the sword and shield! A decision you shan't regret. One moment. Make your way for Victor Quibbles. Fresh meat coming through. Now then, before you enroll, can you, uh, your enrollment can be considered. Yep, gotta talk to the chief. Myla, I love you, please marry me. I, I heard Lulu, uh, I heard Lulu, so, so you're Victor Quibbles. Tis a good name, good strong name. On behalf of the Gladiators Guild, allow me to welcome you. I'm Myla, guild master here. So, you wish to study our arts. I presume you have your reasons for choosing the sword over all other weapons. Perhaps you think it easier to learn. A sword is a simple weapon, but to wield a blade well is anything but simple. For every Colosseum champion to emerge from our ranks, there have been countless disappointments who failed to achieve greatness. Bear that in mind before you answer me, Victor. For I do not ask this question lightly. Have you the strength to live by the sword and, if be it your fate, die by it? Yes! Then welcome, Gladiator, to your new home. Let's not waste time, shall we? 
I would gauge your aptitude for the sword. Just outside the gates of Uldar, you'll find plenty of marmots, hornets, and shrews. Slay three of each and return here when finished. A simple task, but essential to your training nonetheless. Now go! Alright. I prefer minor guildmaster. I forget what the minor guildmaster is, who, who they are. Done it so long ago. Oh god. It's American healthcare. <laughs> Laughing at us. Uh, thank you, V-Dog, Marsh Darn, uh, Marsh Arsenal, Mashed Arsenal, sorry. Uh, Teku, Levenant, uh, Iredolin, Iredolin, Irondolin, my spiffy username, Mini Noises, uh, Illumilama, and Wyvern Flames. Hey, Wyvern Flames. Yep, it is a Lollafell with crazy hair. And you are, ho, a new, ad newly come adventurer. But of course, yes, I am Cesaroga. What can I do for you? Ah, you would have me teach you the ways of the marketplace? Very wise. And for my fee? What? You expect me to do it for free? Surely you jest. My dear adventurer, when you ask an Uldan for a favor, you should at least try to make it worth his while. Judging by your garb, I'd rather doubt you could afford my services, but the fact you offer nothing is laughable. Wow, this place is host just hostilely capitalist land. Can't even do anything for the- just- just cause it's nice. Nah, everything's gotta be for coin. Oh, Mistress Nana- uh, Mistress Mamodi instructed you to seek me out, did she? Hmm. Consider yourself fortunate to have such influential friends. I shall be brief and you shall be attentive. You stand in the Sapphire, Ave uh, Sapphire Avenue Exchange, the busiest and most profitable marketplace in the Sultanate. Being advantageously situated in relation to the other city-states, Uldan's markets have ever served as both the literal and figurative centers of Aorzean commerce. Yeah, so it's like a capital. Uh, it's sort of like a capital in all but name. All the great, great overland trade routes lead to our city, and the major of maritime trade bef between Vilbrand and Aldenard, Ard Aldenard pass through our ports. Because of this, countless companies and consortia have co uh, chosen Uldar as their base of operations. They see to it that this marketplace is awash with merchants and moneylenders day and night. Anything a man could ever desire can be purchased here, provided as he has the sufficient funds. Surely there's something you seek, adventurer? A deadlier sword, perhaps? Or a shinier trinket? Whatever it is you want, the exchange will have it. To the north, you will find merchants peddling armor and accessories, uh, curatives and crafting materials. And to the south, you'll find weapons, tools, and assortments of other useful items for trade. Seek out the particular merchant, uh, a particular merchant, or browse to your heart's content. But do try to remain aloof should you find something that piques your interest. Decisions made in the heat of the moment are usually unwise, especially when coin is concerned. Ahem, that is all complimentary aid you shall have from me, and far too much for my taste. My regards for Mamodi, now off with you. Man, people in this city wouldn't so much as say, like, a friendly hi without asking to be paid for it. Ah, there you go. The secret member of the syndicate, Sammy Thighmaster, who owns another section of Ulda. Yeah, Ulda is a corporate hellhole, yep. Okay, time to go kill some small creatures. <laughs> Oh, that'll be 10 gil. Yeah, it's the same name as my main, and after I'm done doing the first beginning quest, I'll go back to my main to do New Game Plus. Because New Game Plus does not start you at the beginning. <laughs> v 
the end game for the U.S. God. Not to get too political, but Ulda sucks. It kind of does. As much as I love Ulda, I, I really like the politics in this game because the politics are realistic. And of course, I'm not getting political. I'm just talking about the in-game politics. That just so happened to mirror real-world ones. But hey, plausible deniability, right? It's fictional. Yeah, I like that there's reasonable conflict as well, yeah. All of the city-states suck in some way. Yeah, every city-state has its problems. This is not... This is not a perfect world. This is a realistic world. With problems and corruption and... You know, all that nonsense. Yeah, every city's got its hang-ups. Every city's got its bad eggs. Its problematic beliefs. It's bloody history. Yeah, Gridania is xenophobic and bird racist and people racist. And uh, Limza Laminza is a bunch of pillaging, slave trading colonists. <laughs> or colonizers, rather. Because they stole the land from the kobolds. Yeah, I'm just replaying the story. That's all I'm doing. Which goes... If, if this is not a good indication of the, how good this game's story is, the fact that I'm replaying through an MMO's story mode, you know? And the worst one at that, rather... Not the worst one, but, like, you know, the, uh... The fact that it's this, you know, the A Realm Reborn story. The fact that New Game Plus exists really goes to show their confidence in this game's story. I skipped this one? Yeah, I did. Which is why, like, I skipped around a lot first time I played through, and then I went back to rewatch the cutscene, so now I want to re-experience it properly. That's what I want to do. I'm on Pat server? Pat, uh... A let's player? Oh wait, I can attune to the Etherite, that's right. I'm gonna attune to the Adventurer's Guild. Like most of the people who just started Final Fantasy XIV this month all seem to enjoy 14, uh, 2.0 story. Yeah, like, my gripe, my gripe with Final Fantasy XIV that extends not just for 2.0, but all of the expansions, is the story is fine, the story is good. But the actual gameplay and the actual quest that you do to get that story is rough and a mixed bag. And I don't think people will disagree with me on that, that the actual questing that you do, go talk to this person, gather these things, stand at a location for five seconds and collect these things, fetch quests and all that stuff. I think most people will agree that all that is pretty bad. The story is good in spite of these things, though. Not that those things inherently play into the story or are needed for the story. I don't know. Maybe it's arguable that some of it is needed. But I think that's going to be subjective and differ from person to person. All of this I'll reiterate in my video, which I'm making about my experience. I wonder what type of quest would you give to an MMO? Well, that's that's the difficult part, right? Like, don't offer a better option? I don't think they have to. I, I don't think their criticisms are invalidated just because they can't come up with a solution, because as you may guess, gamers are off awful at offering solutions. And a lot of the time their solutions are really bad, but I don't think their criticisms are invalid just because they can't come up with one. Because how they feel is how they feel, you know? Like, I can't explain how to fix certain things, but I can explain why I don't like it. It's not my job to give a solution. It's nice when when constructive criticism is given, but uh, you know, when you're critiquing a product, 
all that's relevant is how the customer feels. I take it you've dispatched the beasts, and with ease. Rest assured, there will be far greater challenges to come. If you wish to master the sword, you must test yourself against a wide variety of foes. To this end, I present you this hunting log. It contains information on creatures ideal for a gladiator in training. You will doubtless gain... And I say that because I don't think... I don't think it's fair to be like, you know... This... Because you can't provide a solution to this criticism, that means the criticism is invalid and this is can't be cr critiqued. Like, I, I, I don't agree with that. Um, I don't know, maybe you guys disagree and that's totally fine. But yeah, I'm of the philosophy that critique is valid, um, but not everything is critique, you know? If a bridge falls down, I can't tell you how to fix it, but I can tell you that it shouldn't have happened. Yeah, exactly. Not saying it's invalid. I was just curious what other types of quests there are. Yeah, well, I think it's it's a result of how the game is built from the ground up that it sort of has to be this way. You know, the game can't allow for more interesting quests because of the systems in place, how it plays, what, you know, the limitations of the engine, right? Which is why I, I go to say that these criticisms... You know, these problems might not even be the game's fault. They're just there, you know? It's also that if you're opening a criticism, you should consider deliverable scope of work and expertise. Right, right. Which is why I say these critiques with the, with the acknowledgement that it's not that simple and I'm okay that they're not fixed, right? Because there might not be a way to fix that and I just have to accept that and move on. And that's just a black mark on the game that I can either take it, take with me or let it not bother or not be a, a hindrance on the overall experience. That's what people mean by it's greater than the sum of its parts, right? Because if you take the sum of the parts of Final Fantasy XIV, it would be a very average game. But it's definitely more than that. The black marks on the game do not ruin the experience, in my opinion. But those black marks are there, and I do think it's valid to point them out. Uh, hunting log, yeah. Hunting log is a great source of XP. All right. And also, criticism uh, has multiple purposes. It it doesn't have to be to improve. It can be for analysis. You know, criticism can be made just for analysis and critique's sake on, you know, criticizing it as a piece of art rather than a product. That's what uh, Joseph Anderson does, is he made a critique of Hollow Knight, and I think every single one of his criticisms are valid. Although, you know, and he, but like some people will be like, yeah, but the game is still worth it. And it's like, he agrees. He agrees with that, because at the beginning of his critique, he says, this is not a review of this game, because if this is, a, if you want to take a review of this game, I would highly recommend this game. It is well worth the price, and it is kind of immune to criticism, and it's perfect. But that is separate from you know, criticism as a form of analyzing art. Yeah, 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 it means there's space for improvement. Exactly, I, I totally agree about uh, Balbear. Absolutely, and I think that's what a lot of people don't realize whenever they hear or read or see critique, is that they think it's trying to invalidate people's purchase or say that a game is not worth it or whatever, but it's, it's not trying to say if an item or a product is worth your money. It's more, it's looking at a, a deeper level, rather, I guess. How's your tour of the city, Victor? Get lost, did you? Aye, well, Uldar's a big place with lots to see and do, but wandering around aimlessly don't pay the bills. If you're serious about making a living there, uh, living here, you'll need to remember where things are. So, when you go exploring, explore like you've got a purpose, eh? We had a generation raised to look at the number at the end of a page, yeah, which is a shame. I understand why it's there, but it's sad that people don't read reviews. Or it's also sad that people disregard reviews entirely. Like, oh, this is why I don't listen to reviewers. It's like, what, because they disagree with your opinion on the game? If you have your opinion on the game already, then the review is not for you, and it's irrelevant, you know? The review shouldn't bother you. The review shouldn't even 
you shouldn't even take it into account, but it's allowed to exist. All a review is is an opinion. An opinion can't be wrong. People feel how they feel. And even if they don't go about experiencing it the way that you think they should, it's still valid. People take things too personally? Absolutely, 100%. If I find someone who believes that, like, who writes a review for Later Alligator and says it's, like, a 5 out of 10, who cares? If they think it's a 5 out of 10, they think it's a 5 out of 10. I think it's a 10 out of 10, but, like, I'm not gonna say cancel all reviewers or never listen to reviewers ever again. Or, you know, uh, you, you should listen to journalists. Oh, they're a different type of people. I just don't consider blah, blah, blah. It's like... You are putting way too much, you know, weight on reviewers. Like, they're just giving their opinion on the product to inform people. That's all it is. And you can either take the information as useful or not, but... Ugh, gamers, man. Gamers don't know how to take criticism. Or review. Yep. They disagreed with me on this one game, so now, now they can never be possibly be right ever again. Yep. All right, then all that's left is for you to work hard, make money, and spend it, spend it here at the quicksand. All right. What's up? We must rebuild. So I want to introduce to someone at Uldar's dispatch yard. Oh, I think this is the one. I think once I do this one, then I will, uh, then I can start New Game Plus. Oh, Season 3 of, um, Log Horizon? Nice. Alright, time to do some side quests. Yeah, I love those, I love those reviews that are like 50,000 hours not recommended. Worst game, has no content. It's like, oh, geez, I guess so, if you play 50,000 hours. Hey, Wyman, what do you got for us? So, how are you taking, uh, taking the Uldar, Victor? Make any new friends in high places yet? <laughs> well, you have the Sultan uh, Sultana's ear one day. I hope you won't forget about old Wyman. Long as you're here, mayhap you can do me a favor and take this missive to uh, Josias at the Platinum Mirage. It's just over yonder, and the man will give you some gill for your trouble. If only all worked, work in the city was this easy, eh? All right. Fetch quest. Where is Nuance? Nuance has died when it comes to games. Some assistance. Tell me, what brings you here, friend? Hmm, looking for a bit of work, perhaps? Uh, some small job to add a little weight to that coin purse of yours, hmm? Well, you're in luck. The Pugilists just have place, uh, place an order for me for several leather gloves and harnesses they use for sparring. But the traders are cruel, for I find myself lacking the hides required. Would that I had the pelts of a few snapping shrews. What say you, friend? Hmm? Care to help a merchant down on his luck? Hmm? Give me five snapping shrew pelts, and I promise to make it worth your while. You can find the creatures roaming central Fanalan. hmm? I'm not doing this one. Abandoned. I want some easy quests. Uh, where are you? There you are. Do you have business with the Platinum Mirage today? Here's a letter. Missive from Wyman. All right, then, let's have a look. Bird is barren. Let the hounds feast. <sighs> so it goes. Oh, this? Well, you see, the guild is often contracted to provide protective ser uh, services. Unfortunately for this particular petitioner, Wyman's investigation has revealed his finances to be wanting. Maybe adventurers like you don't mind working for free, but we have a business to run. I myself have four mouths to feed, so this bird will have to fend for himself, I'm afraid. Well, guess they're dead now. Oh, that was trash XP. Actually, I'm just gonna grind some mobs. That's what I'll do. New game plus? Yep, yep. Uh, while I'm running, actually, I'm gonna turn on the fan and the air. It's getting hot in the desert. Oh yeah, hunting log, that's right. I can use the, I can just 
to the hunting log. What's the bonus of New Game Plus? There is none. It's just for the sake of playing a game because it's fun. You remember that? Remember replaying games because they were fun? Because you enjoyed them? That's a nice time. And that's what I'm doing. I'm replaying a game because it's fun. Pepperidge Farm remembers. There we go. There we go. Level four. I got my number two. Combos. Press a thing. When the other thing lights up, press that thing. Easy peasy. <laughs> what is this fun? Hello, Sammy. I really appreciate that this game doesn't reward grinding enemies in the wild, but instead rewards you for doing activities instead. Yeah. What would you say is your favorite class? Ooh, that's a hard one. Either Dancer, Red Mage, or Black Mage. Those are really fun to play. Ooh, or Machinist. Bard is... Okay. <laughs> Bard is in a re weird spot right now. And I made a video, you know, on my personal channel about what I'd like to fix about it. Well, young Lin, how are you finding our fine Uldar, then? Go, uh, got your bearings about you yet? If so, mayhap it's time you ventured beyond the city walls. The bustling streets of Uldar are one thing, but the wilds of Thanalan, that's another altogether. I know a bloke you might fancy speaking to, and he you. Name of Papa Shan. You'll find him over in the at the Uldar dispatch yard. No doubt he'll have some work for you. The dispatch yard's over to in central Thanalan. Just head over to the door across the hall, and you'll see the gates of Nald staring back at you. Pass through it and head east. You'll come upon it for long. The danger's beyond the wall, though. More than I'd care to count. Nothing too terrible, mind you, but feisty enough to attack you if you draw near. Don't say nobody cared enough to warn you. Papa Sean! <laughs> Papa John's. Nah, Papa Sean could never. If you could have one job from any Final Fantasy game, what would you want the most? Altern alternatively, if you could adjust any current job to be uh, what they are in another game, what job would you change it? Um, I would want a bard to flavor-wise be more bard-like. And have like a rapier, like a one-handed rapier. Essentially what Red Mage is, but like melee DPS, I guess, or melee support style. Um, realistically, I wouldn't do that because that would conflict with how the game is designed, but that's what I would like. Like a proper bard, because the bard in this game is more bard in flavor rather than in function, and in function it, it is an archer class. Hello, Papa Sean. Well, you certainly look the part of an adventurer, my friend. Might you be the good old soul Mamodia advised me to expect him? I am Papa Sean, station master of this humble dispatch yard. An empty title, I assure you. I truly am no more than a tiled old Lalafell passing his final years in quiet and solitude. Twelve no, there have been plenty of both these last five years since the calamity struck. The devastation was vast. Yet now true Uldarns work together, doing all in our power to rebuild what was laid to ruin. By the sweat of our brows and the love of our home, we have rebuilt Uldar to the grandeur and majesty that you see today. The railways which run through the dispatch yard too were born of the noble efforts of a great many souls. But there is still much work to be done. The wounds left by the calamity run deep. In so, uh, isolated areas beyond our lines of supply remain. And there are places yet wanting for relief and res uh, restoration. Uldar's need needs the aid of you and yours, brethren, friend. In fact, never has our need been more dire. 
Which brings me to the point, I suppose. I do believe I may have uh, some work suited to one of your ability. All right, let's take the money and leave. And now we may begin proper New Game Plus. Because this is where New Game Plus starts. Yep, no spoiler talk, please, for anyone who's tuning in that this is their first time. This is a story mode. This is a story retelling. And no, no clever comments either. So whenever there's a thing like, uh, you know, we're gonna meet someone in Corthus later on, no, no being clever, all right? No being like, oh man, clever comment here. No, 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 none of that. No cheeky boys in, in the chat. Gonna do New Game Plus alongside me? Hell yeah. I don't think the chat is smart enough for that. No, the chat is not smart, which is exactly why they, I think they are going to do that. You know? It's like, it's like if we watched A New Hope and someone was like, man, this Darth Vader sure is a daddy, am I right? It'd be like that. But first, let us take off these fancy garments and return to Monkey. Man, this Anakin person sure has a future and breathing problems. Yeah, exactly. Basically, don't do any of that when we run into any foreshadowing or anything like that. The Aft Castle. Uh, what's the difference between Pugilus and Monk? N none. Pugilus turns into Monk. Like, there's, an, there's just a legacy thing in this game where classes turn into jobs. Like, you know, Gladiator turns into Paladin. Pugilus turns into Monk. Um, rogue turns into ninja, etc, etc. The only thing where it matters is when Arcanist turns into either Scholar or Summoner. But that's the only class that does that. Alright, I've been waiting to do this for a while. I even have all this set up. Like, I have all my glamours set up and ready for the various different parts of the story. So, like, this is when, like, we go to, go to Alamigo. Uh, this is when we go to, uh... What is it? The North, in Heaven's Word. This is when we, you know, uh, I've had these outfits ready for a while. But for now, we are simply going to return to Monkey. Um, we'll just get rid of this one, why not? We're gonna role play being a low level. So I have all my level one gear here still, but with one caveat, always have the flowers in the hair. Always. And the bell. Cote gloves, cote pants, and cote knee shoes. There we go, long boots. Go. And um, just so we have it at the ready, let's make our, like, part way up. Oh no, let's keep that one. Our part way leveled gladiator. So we're gonna get rid of this sword, keep this sword, and we're gonna get a fancy shield. That's what we'll do. And then a, uh, da 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 da, this. Uh, this, dye this, gray, mm, this is this one? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, where that? No, that one, because that's actually black. And, um, I'm basically making glamours for various different parts of the story. I don't know if anybody else does that. But, um, ha ha ha, I do that. Let's go with 
This one, yeah. There we go. That's when we become a fully fledged gladiator. Basically. Alright. Glamour time. Hi ya. And. New Game Plus. Uh, I was playing New Game Plus with uh, my girlfriend earlier, but I can catch up. So, you can't do multiple New Game Pluses, unfortunately. You can't keep them all saved. Kitoki. Okay, and my first quest? We must rebuild. Oh, I need to go talk to... Mamodi. What does New Game Plus do? It allows you to replay through the game. Through the main story quest. Uh, with no rewards, no XP, no money. I think you get some quest-specific items that are needed, but they're not worth anything. So yeah, here I am. Starting the quest again with 600,000 gil. No big deal. Any differences? Nope. The story is as it was. Although, there has been a lot of cut quests from the initial A Realm Reborn, just to streamline it. Like, I think there are quite a few more quests that you had to do before you had to talk to Mamodi and start this questline, for example. But aside from that, it's mostly just getting rid of all the, you know, all the tedious quests that don't have bearing on the story. You do get dialogue for uh, some reactions if you leveled a specific job. Oh yeah, that's right. There is unique dialogue. Uh, we cannot... Uh, can we not see your mouse? Yeah, I, I remove... Well, I guess I could turn it back on if you guys care. I don't know that's a big deal, but yeah, why not? There we go. Uh, how many Disciple of Land or Hand have I leveled? Uh, uh, uh. Omni Gang. So tasty. Ooh, Madame Pringle, thanks for the well done steak. I've never actually donated before, but I recently got a job I really enjoy and feel like it is time to give back to someone who has brought me so much joy. I love the content, keep it the good work. Congrats on finding a job! Well done! Thank you! Hell yeah. Good luck. I max out everything but fishing? Yes, because, um, partly because I have no interest in fishing, but also I have a meme lore where Victor is terrified of the ocean. Like a cat. Since you've come all this way, perhaps you can perform an errand for me. It just so happens a number of sentries have been sent to guard the area. A dispatch to the dispatch yard, as it were. They have long been away from the shade and feather beds of the city. The hot days and cold nights can play, uh, play hells on the mind and body out there. It isn't much, but go and give them these twilight pretzels, would you? I find comfort food always helps me when I'm feeling like killing myself. <laughs> Jesus. You know, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, this is what I mean by the story's good, actually, because the writing is actually kind of kind of great. Hello. Halt, sir. I'm going to have to ask you to put that pretzel on the ground and place your hands above your head. Uh, here you go. State your name and business, a twilight pretzel from Papa Sean? By the gods, forgive me. You could say this new post has my nerves in a twist. I, I'm terribly sorry for that. that. <clears throat> yes, well, you may rest assured that the dispatch yard is safe as long as I stand watch. Please give Papa Sean my thanks and tell him that I only wish I could repay the favor. 
<laughs> Get it? Oh boy. Oh, that's one sad thing because I'm not replaying through the game properly. I don't get to re-meet my chocobo. Because it's it's very touching when you first meet your chocobo. It's very nice. Western front clear! Eastern front clear! Here, have a pretzel. A traditional dunes folk bread twisted into the shape of a knot and sprinkled generously with coarse ground salt before being baked into a perfect brown resemblance twilight over thanalin. Aw. You get a chocobo for free? Hell yeah, you do. For me, from Papa Sean, a twilight pretzel, my favorite. How did he know? Can't fight on an empty stomach now, can I? Actually, I can't fight on any stomach. I suppose you could say I have no stomach for fighting. Well then, uh, we're gonna put my chocobo on here. Oh, that's a chocobo carriage, whoops. Uh, do I not have my regular chocobo? Um, companion, there we go. His name is Mudclaw and I love him very much. I stole the carriage from the initial cutscene, yeah. Also, funny that they, they're called Dunes Folk, so I guess it makes sense that Lalafell are natives to the desert. Twelve save me, scorching days, freezing nights. This post will be the end of me. Okay, but what if I gave you a pretzel? A twilight pretzel? Don't mind if I do! Ah, no, that's a refreshing goddamn pretzel. I feel reborn. Much as I hate to say it, though, the pretzel does nothing to change the fact that these cold nights are bloody intolerable. Yeah, you'll... you'll... Uh, hang in there, bud. Mud claw, but with ironically clean claws. Oh, you don't know where these claws have been, friend. I have, I have headcanon lore. Well, I call it lore, but it's not written down anywhere. It's just all in my head. That mud claw named because he likes to get his feet dirty and cool in the in the Thanalan mud all the time because of the hot desert. He's a messy boy. You returned, and with a deal few pretzels, I see. Tell me, how fair are Sultan's sworn sentries? Do they have anything to report, anything at all? What? Nothing? Are you sure? I... Oh. Oh, dear. Take this for your troubles, then, and stay a moment. There's more I would ask of you. Ah, uh, you gave me nothing. Victor, I have just this moment. No, no, the time for concealment is past. The truth is, even before I had you deliver those pretzels, I was privy on some most unsettling news. Which is the real reason I sent you to meet those Sultan Sworn. Ooh, dire need of your assistance. A young noblewoman from a very prestigious family has run away from home, and I've been ordered to see to her safe return. The Sultan Sworn you met earlier are assisting with the search. Alas, it seems they have found no trace of her. I apologize for not being frank with you from the start, but we must proceed with caution. Should word of her disappearance spread, I fear others with less honorable motives may join the hunt. And should we allow her to come to any harm, not even a hundred beheadings would be punishment enough. That cannot happen, happen, Victor. It must not. I need your help to... I need you to help me find her. All right. Find a high, valuable target. Praise the Twelve, I knew I could count on you. I've instructed the others to expand the search, but Thanalan is vast and there's only so many of us. The young noblewoman's name is Lady Lilira. I want you to go south and look for her in the vicinity of the Sultan Tree. Good luck. The localization is beautiful, even if the English voice acting in ARR is a bit hit or miss. Yes, hit or miss is the, the perfect way to describe the voice acting in ARR. It's like some of them are nice, like Merle Wib, uh, Louis Swa, uh... Do I not have this hunting log done all this time? All right. Wow. Um, let's see. 
Urianje's pretty good. Uh, Thancred's okay. Who else? Sid is weird, yeah. Gaius is serviceable. Oh, Sultan Tree. Oh, Sultan Tree. You're about to enter an instance battle. Uh, let's do normal. Yeah, we'll get to hear some of the voices now. Oh, Sultan Tree, hallowed spirit of my line, forgive my weakness. My failings have cost us dear. Get ready for the worst and half finished British accent ever. It like fluctuates between trying to be British and not knowing what a British accent entails. Show yourself. Hello. Oh. <sighs> As you command, oh Lily Ra? Yeah, Thancred's all right. So Zelda Breath of the Wild is here. True. Forgive my selfish desire to assure your welfare. I don't recall requesting an escort. Simply pretend we never met and continue on your way. Oh, also, everyone talks really slowly, so get ready for some agonizingly long dialogue. Zelda and Breath of the Wild was the way. Yeah, Zelda and Breath of the Wild, I think, yeah, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that her British accent is mm, rough. I don't mind her talking so much. It's just, I don't know. I, I think she could have used a bit more voice direction. We both know I can do no such thing. It isn't safe for you here alone. It Play with Japanese audio? Anyone. No, I'll stick with English. Not with this etheric disturbance. It's as though the dead are watching us. And I'd prefer not to join them, if it's all the same to you. Ah, you must be the one that Papa Shan mentioned. Congratulations on finding our elusive young charge. You'll have to forgive her impetuousness. What she lacks in discipline, she makes up for in stubbornness. You should return with us. The station master will be eager to thank Lady Lilira's protector in person. Yeah, Alas, there's quite a few the station master will have to wait. <laughs> there's quite a few critical role peeps in here. Dear Lilira, for my sake, please stay out of harm's way. As for you, dear friend, for Lilira's sake, please stay in harm's way. All right, here we go, swoopy boy. Let me turn down. I'll be with you. I'll be right with you, Thankred. I'm just turning up the voice volume. Uh, turning down the BGM a little bit. Yeah, you can handle him. There we go. All right, I'm on my way. Thankred, use your skills. Stop auto-attacking. Are you using gladiator skills? With a dagger? Excuse me? You're a rogue, right? Was that Flash? Oh man, these are some old skills. Sorry, handsome stranger. This is before Rogue existed? Oh, is it? Ah. Right, because Rogue is a level 15 class. You have to be level 15 to get it. And it wasn't introduced until one of the patches. His handsome knife's, uh, handsome stranger's knife was a, a small sword. Really interesting. Huh? More 
baddies. I'll take care of them. I got them. Take this. Black mages and white mages had shields. Yeah, that's another holdover from 1.0. There we go. Rancher. Sorry, what was that last one? I like to consider myself a crystal cat. I am Hydaelyn, all made one. A light there once was that shone throughout this realm, yet it has since grown dim. It's, I don't know, it seems pretty bright to me. And as it hath faltered, so hath darkness risen up in its stead, presaging an end to life. For the sake of all, I beseech thee, deliver us from this fate. The power to banish the darkness dwelleth in the crystals of light. Journey forth and lay claim to them. Okay. Holy crap, is that you? By thy deeds shall the crystals reveal themselves. Thee. Only believe, for the light liveth in thy heart. Hey, so, uh, am I supposed to- okay, bye. Uh, uh, do you know how- uh, my name's Victor, by the way. Oh, I'm getting nauseous. I'm not used to flying. Go now, my child, and shine thy light on all creation. This is why I never got on airships! Ah. Coming around now. Ooh, handsome stranger. Would you mind telling me what that was? 
yours. Hmm. If I only knew. A denizen of the Void, at any rate. The Void sent? Yeah, but how? The question isn't how, but who. We're not dealing with bookless bandits. Don't suppose the answer came to you in a dream? Why not just hire a British voice actor? Uh, I'm sure there are plenty of reasons. No sooner did you fell the beast than you fell asleep. Too much ether, no doubt. Yeah, money. They probably, they had a shoestring budget. I hadn't considered the crystal. But of course, this changes everything. Hmm? Oh, just thinking aloud. At any rate, we haven't a moment to spare. I must return and report this at once. Oh yeah, also they changed studios, that's right. I leave Lady Lilira in your capable hands. How dare you pass me about like a swaddled babe? I shall return and tell them myself. <laughs> As you wish, your impetuousness. I suspect we shall meet again before long. Until then, do try and stay awake. Hmm, but nappy times. All right. Uh, someone asked, how do skills work if you get nothing? Well, you don't lose your skills. You know, when you get synced down, you lose your skills, yeah, but for the most part, you keep them. You know, I still have all my level 80 skills and such. Thank the gods you returned. You had us all so worried. You do realize what would have happened if a person of your noble stature were to be injured or worse? Why, her grace the Sultana would be beside herself with grief, and so would her subjects. I dare say they'd be whipping, weeping in the streets. But I have already given you cause to weep, Papa Shan, you and the people of Uldar. Please, you're, uh, you're not to say such things. We will find it, I swear you. It is not my place to make demands, uh, milady. Uh, but I beg you, please stay out of harm's way. I apologize for causing you undue worry, Papa Shan. I shall refrain from traveling unescorted in the future. Speaking of bad British accents, yeah, I, I I make no claim that I am any better than the baddest British accents in A Realm Reborn. I cannot thank you enough, Victor. I understand you fought bravely to protect Lady Lily Ra from the void sent fiends. For all your gallant services, you deserve all the riches in the royal vaults. Alas, small token of my gratitude to the best I can offer. Sarcastic man with a strange contraption strapped to his shoulder. I see you met Thancred. He's a scholar who spends his days investigating oddities and in the ether, rather too fond of the sound of his own voice for my liking, but perfectly harmless. As for you, Victor, you are just the sort of adventurer we need around here. I pray you show the same kindness to the people of Thanalan as you did to us today. Yeah, I'm recognized. Hello. Uh, Kikidoa? Sisidoa? I don't know. Sikidoa. Uh, you're an adventurer, yes? If you're not otherwise occupied, I have a favor to ask. I resolve to pay, repay a debt of gratitude which I owe the owner of the coffer and coffin. For this purpose, 
I've purchased the royal plantation, the prod uh, prodigiously plump pumpkin, a partic particularly popular piece of produce. It's like, just, just, oh God. Alas, I cannot part this place to produce, procure a proffer of pumpkin. You see the scheduled shipment for the Nanawa mines for which I, uh, uh, wait, is late. <laughs> oh God, I will prevail upon you to pick up the pumpkin in my stead <laughs> and see it safely to the coffer and coffin. Present this receipt to the purchase of Gagari at the royal plantations. She will, uh, <laughs> and she will yield it to you. I apologize for asking you to attend to this time-consuming task, but I truly appreciate your assistance. It's just got like, my face is soaked in Lalafell spit now. La literation. <laughs> Oh god. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm showing you the chat. There we go. Gagari! It's a sea rod. Doesn't come calling soon. This sp spectacular specimen shall sadly be past its prime. Uh, here it is. Uh, exchange for shipment. Oh, so you're to deliver this, uh, decadent delight. I can say with confidence that any gourmand would be grateful for such a grand gift. Here is the pumpkin. I hope you meet with Roger's approval. It meets with Roger's approval. Fresh produce is somewhat scarce in these parts, and as such, we are always deluged with demand. You know the way to the coffer and coffin, correct? It's beyond the bridge to the northwest. Look for a place with a local laborer's lounge. Okay. Sorry if I misread a few things. I'm bad at it. Ooh, got a little saloon. Hello, Roger. Ah, oh, I love this song. Drink your fiddle, uh, drink for your laddie. You won't get better ale or spirits for your coin than at me place. Here's a pumpkin. Uh, eating, it is believed that after eating pumpkin for the first time, the Sultana fell in love with the nutty flavor and ordered all her royal plantations grow the vegetable. Hmm. What's that? We, Sisi Doa, asked you to bring, uh, bring this here to me. Ha! So even the foul-mouthed drunk know the meaning of remorse. Reckon this is for the time I carried his drinks on Nars back home. But hails, an honest to God's pumpkin from the royal plantations. I can't wait to see what the cooks will do with her. The lads here scoff down beastly amounts of meat, and it's starting to tell on their health. It'll be good to get more vegetables in their bellies, assuming I can get the stubborn bastards to try something new. Thanks for the help, laddie. Got any jobs for me? Word is, Blackbrush Station sorely under, uh, undermanned. The stone torches there can't get a moment's peace. A bloke by the name of Warren is hoping to bolster their numbers for a short-term assignment or two. If you fancy putting a few extra gill in your pocket, you should could do a lot worse. Yeah, so far a lot of these quests are not like that related. You're just kind of an adventurer doing the odd job here and there. A favor here, a job there. Oh, hello. It's Warren. Looking for work, perchance? If so, you couldn't have come at a better time. We stone torches are cell swords hired by the Amal... Uh, uh, Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern to protect its interests. Our primary duty here is to keep the tracks clear of pests, and it is for this purpose that we require your aid. How long till the story pops off? Um, a bit. <laughs> Once we leave Ulda, that's when the story starts to pick up quite a bit. Does Victor have any in-game lore? Uh, loosely. He's kind of just a normal lad. I should point out, however, that it can be a messy work and liable to get messier still if you're ill-prepared. A single piece of gear can mean the difference. Okay, so he's gonna gear check us. Yep. Hey, I've got gear. Good, everything appears in order. 
Yet know that naught is guaranteed in this world. Fate is a fickle mistress, after all. At any rate, capable adventurers like you are few and far between, and I would not have you throw your life away. I have, I have had to bury too many comrades who brushed aside cracks in their auburks and dints in their helms. No matter what you face, do not disregard the importance of gear. Ooh. Should we gear up now, I think? Oh, I can't move them. Thing is, I have all these prepped outfits and glamours, but I never know when the right time to uh, actually glamour them over would be. But, uh, yeah. I think maybe later on might be a good time to glamour up. You know what? No. Let's, uh, let's do it now. Let's go to Ulda. And let's glam up. Since this is a good moment to, uh, that's not, that's Gridania. No, that is Uldah, okay. Can only use glam chests outside of New Game Plus? What? Oh, the glamour chest, I see. I can, I can still glam. So, uh, yeah, let's get our proper equipment going, shall we? There we go. And this is, in canon, us prepping our equipment for inspection and ready and all that stuff. I am ready for adventure. This is also the gear that you get when you talk to the smith and all that stuff. Warren has worked for an adventurer willing to exterminate the Coblin's attack or attacking ore wagons. Let's get to it, shall we? Ore wagons pass through the station every day, but not without incident. Wagons coming and going from the dispatch yard and the south must pass through a tunnel. Excuse me. By Fesca's watch, a tunnel in which some genius saw fit to put an ore storehouse, creating ideal conditions for a coblin nest. So now, the ore-loving beasts have taken up residence in a tunnel we dug, and we're practically delivering meals to their doorstep. But no more! Inside the tunnel in question, you will find a narrow fissure where the coblins hide. Use this silver ore cluster to lure out the creatures, then slay them. Okie dokie! Dang coblins. Oh, look! Somebody else is also fighting coblins. Alright, let's place the bait. Oh. I'll let, uh, I'll not interfere. I'll let them fight. Because I'm going to one-shot these. Simply sit and watch. Come on, you can do it. Oh, you stood in the AoE. Lesson number one. Don't st well, he's a black mage, so that makes sense. He's already on his way. Okay. Laying the bait. And smack. And smack. And smack. There we go. <laughs> he already knows the way of the black mage. Ooh, I need to put on uh, FC buffs. Hold on. Oh, no, they're on. Somebody else put them on. Thank goodness. Well done. It shan't be easy work to keep the tunnel free of coblins, but our wagon should be able to go unmolested for a time. Disruptions to ore shipments threaten not only the interests of um, uh, Amagina and Sun's mineral concern, but of Ulda herself. One might liken these train tracks to veins that bear our nation's lifeblood. So that's what I kind of like, even with A Realm Reborn, is they give context of the larger picture about what you're doing. You know, like, although you are just doing a simple task of fighting these pests in a tunnel, it is helping the trade routes of the city. If only we had more men like you to lend a hand. 
you get buffs for being in a guild? Yeah, look, like this one gets extra gold saucer points, and this one reduces teleportation cost. Ah, the altruistic adventure. I was hoping we'd bump into each other. Why? Because the most fascinating piece of news recently reached my ears, and I'm eager to share it, may I? I do like rumors. Rumor has it that there is a vast untapped vein of ore beneath the ruins of Sildi. But that's not all. Inconceivably, the concern appears to be entirely ignorant of its existence. And even as we speak, a young upstart, a self-made merchant from Stonethrow, of all places, is moving to claim it. The fellow's name is Wyston, and he is a very, very ambitious young man. Not only does he intend to secure exclusive excavation rights, but they say his master plan is to use his new fortune to curry favor with the sac uh, Sacrarium. Of course, the thaumaturges only consider the opinions of the most wealthy when drafting the laws of Uldah. If you would have your voice heard, you must be prepared to pay a sultan's ransom. Great, so the people writing the laws are being paid off, good. One voice which is invariably heard belongs to Lord Lolorito. Oh, God. He has long lavished guild upon the thaumaturges, and some claim that he devises new laws with the express intention of ruining his competitors while protecting his own interests. Oh, boy. Suffice it to say, if Wyston thinks he can compete with the likes of the uh, Syndicate, he's in for a rude awakening. But that eventuality may yet be a little ways off. For the present, he is moving ahead with his plans and assembling a team to survey the site. I'm told he's at the Coffer and Coffin right now, recruiting able-bodied adventurers to escort his prospectors. Warren said you were looking for work. Perhaps you should meet with Wyston and volunteer for his expeditions. Man, Lola Rito being mentioned this early. Wow. Eat the syndicate, yeah. Eat the rich. Hello, Wyston. Come to join? Sorry, but you're too late. Some brass blades looking for extra coin volunteer. Oh, God, the black. So remember, the brass blades are basically the guardsmen of Ulda. And they're the ones who planted drugs on our cart earlier uh, today when we were just coming in. Some brass blades looking for extra coin volunteered, and the teams are already en route to the ruins. But look, I know it's not easy to find work these days. If you're interested, there's something else you can do for me. There are these children outside, little ones from Stone's Throw. I look after them when I've got time to spare, and so they've taken to following me around even when I tell them not to. But what with overseeing the search for the vein, I barely have a chance to visit the privy at the moment, much less entertain younglings. Could you give them these ginger cookies and convince them to go home for me? All right. Hey, kids, have some cookies. Go home. I like playing with Wysand. He makes sure no one bullies us. Oh, he's kind of busy right now. Straight from good Wysand's pocket. Don't mind the lint. Oh, that's cute. Why Stan's worried about us? Oh, I don't want to make him worried. I'm a good girl, so I'll go home. <laughs> I'll pay you three cookies to fuck off. I ain't going nowhere, mister. I'm too hungry to move. Besides, you have to carry me. Here. It's got pocket lint in it. A cookie? Well, if Wystan really wants me to go home, then all right. But I want two next time. Starveling. <laughs> Is it shriveling and starving? But why is Dan always plays with us? Why won't he come out and play? Here, have a cookie. Wow, a ginger cookie. I better save some for my brother. I know. I'll go home and eat it with him. So, how do Lalafell tell the children apart from the adults, aside from behaviorally? Is it just, like, is there a look that they just know? So it kind of looks the same, for all I get. Facial hair? But they're, they're Lalafell without facial hair, though. <laughs> we don't know? Yeah, I guess maybe, maybe they just inherently know. I don't know. <laughs> Very carefully. Yeah, I'm sure there's some in, in, like, lore, like, explanation, even if it's not said. 
Why stands kind to us? I like him. Voice when they talk? Yeah, probably voice. This is for me. I want to eat it, but then again I don't, because then I'd be gone. It'd be gone. Tell why stand thanks, and tell him I'm sorry for getting in the way. I think that was just an adult that just wanted a cookie. You gonna go get your 5G shots? Enjoy! Lay in bed. Stay hydrated. Thank you, adventure. I only wish I could do more. Stone's throw is no place for a child. Not that my childhood was much happier. Never enough food, food to go around, nor work to earn it. But no shortage to con of contempt from the great and the good. I remember thinking things could only get better. Yet now, after the calamity and everything else, for us refugees to be forced to live outside the gates like bloody beastmen is a disgrace. They say with enough money you can change the laws here, so I'm going to make a fortune and do just that. I'll buy the excavation rights and start my own mining business. Then I'll give my fellow refugees the work they're crying out for and pay them fairly. Aw, how altruistic of you. The mining companies have profited from our suffering for far too long, but in their hubris they've grown complacent, presenting us with golden opportunity. The place, we will take it, and, and we will take it, adventure. We will reclaim our dignity and with our place within those walls. Oh. We found her. We found the vein, Wysten. Ye must come and see. Already? Amazing. We leave at once. You should join me, my friend. Come and bear witness to history in the making. Aww. This guy just wants to do good by his fellow man. That's nice. Let's see how it goes horribly wrong. Oh yeah, this place. I remember this place. Yeah. See, anyone who knows the story of A Realm Reborn, this is why I think Ulda is like the best starting area for the Realm Reborn story. Let's go, uh, easy, just so it doesn't take forever. <gasps> Ashley! Ashley Roboto! The crabs are here! Whoa! Hello, crabs! Oh! Everybody, Ashley, the wonderful, energetic, great, cool, pretty person, and, like, one of the most positive coolest sweetest people on the platform she's this uh, she just finished her last stream before she goes goes on a week-long vacation thank you ashley welcome we're doing a realm reborn story and re replaying it through because i i played it really roughly and weirdly the first time around and also just to recap the story for anybody who's not able to play this game because i think it's a wonderful story so if you are interested in storytelling and, and like being read to like a book uh and listening in, then uh, welcome and join me as we go through one of the best MMO stories and possibly one of the best video game stories ever written. And I truly mean that. Like, I'm a stickler for storytelling, so I, I you know, I really do mean that. Later on, that is. A Realm Reborn is serviceable. But yeah. Welcome, crabs. What? The brass blades were corrupt? Aww. Oh. Thal's balls, son. A vein of ore in the middle of a ruined bloody city? God's damn idiot. What did you think was gonna happen? Did you strike it rich and get cozy with the order while the masters of Ulda looked on? No one crosses the syndicate. Uh, the, uh, the syndicate? Ha! <laughs> Finally sunk in, has it? Well, look at this. Not all your friends are deserter, deserted ye, it seems. Lucky boy. Now you won't have to die alone. O oh, mournful voice of creation, grant ye this humble stone a soul that it may wake to life. Who's that spouting gibberish? Show yourself! 
Darkness Keyblade. This ain't part of the plan. Bloody hells, does Lord Lolorito mean to kill us too? Flee! Flee for your coin purses! All right, here we go. I got you. Die, Golem! You are easy to... <laughs> this Golem is easy to kill. You are strong, but are you strong enough to withstand this? Yeah, yeah, probably. Impossible. Never has the Golem been so sorely tested. Smack. All right, awesome. That the Golem could be vanquished. Actually, I might play on normal mode from now on. Easy was a little too easy. That man is no ordinary adventurer. Who said that? Oh, come on. I, I could have seen him in my cone of vision. Damn. Seems I've missed all the fun. I see you didn't need my help this time. Yeah, but I've got a- oh, I've got a killer headache, oh! Ah, uh, ever the womanizer. <laughs> I know this kind of t character type can, uh... He's divisive amongst people, but I like him. I would compose a ballad in your honor, but I fear no words could do you justice. The songstress of Uldar herself could not rival your beauty. Oh, stop it. I have oft heard it said that the blossom's beauty can move a man to love and long, but I never truly believed it until I met you two desert roses. I hear they attacked another caravan. Aye, and business is suffering for it. Bloody Amalja. What stirred him up, you, do you reckon? Another raid. Now wager that caravan was carrying crystals, much like the last. If they truly mean to summon a primal, we must act quickly. Are you coming, love? Would you keep a, uh, You wouldn't keep a girl waiting, would you? Damn. What a chad. Being able to get find two girls who are okay with you. Thancred said Polly writes. And perish the thought. So tell me, where's this marvel of a city might you lo lovely ladies be staying? <laughs> Jeez, Thancred, why does your mom let you have two girlfriends? At this rate, grain will soon be more precious than gold. A result of the uncommonly bad harvest, to be sure. Ah, so this gives you an idea of when this flashback is taking place. It doesn't do a great job because it's using um, the game's current ac uh, assets, so it looks like this could have just been a few days ago, but that is the red moon of Dalamud before it fell which was five years ago. And we have you to thank for them, do we not? Aye, the weakening of the etheric flow must surely be linked to Dalaman's descent. And of course, to the primals. A fine mess, but we must not lose hope. Louis Soir will know what to do. We need only trust in his judgment. Spoilers, Louis Soir did not know what to do. Well, he kind of did. He improvised.
Yeah, now this is the flashback from earlier today. The game doesn't do a good job of, like, making that clear, but this was earlier. Like, just like a day ago. Truly a marvel of Shalian ingenuity. As if it could reach out and touch ether. Those of you who played female characters, did any of you feel slightly insulted because Thancred never flirted with you? Well, he's a respectful man, you know, you're, you're, you're business partners, he, you know. He, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't hit on workmates. Except for, I guess, except for Ishtola, I don't know. Time to focus. No more gallivanting about like before. The Scions are counting on you. Have faith. Just have faith. You can do this. No, he would no, he would never hit on Minfilia. He and Minfilia have a a wholesome relationship. Ishtola flirts back. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, no, Minfilia is off limits. Cause uh he he's actually kind of like a surrogate dad to Minfilia. Cause like in 1.0, there's a cutscene of him saving her from a Gobu attack, and she was just a child, so he's older than her, and he kind of, like, adopted her, in a way. So, yeah, no, no flirting with Minfilia. Hmm. This disturbance is recent. The Sultan Tree. Maybe Papa Shan will know something of it. Yeah, older brother, father figure, one of the two. Yeah, Menphilia's family. Oh. Looks like they gave you quite a thrashing. Can you walk? It's me. I was too late. Our person of interest has already quit the scene. The general? Very well. I shall be there anon. My colleagues went to great lengths to provide me with a means to detect etheric disturbances, but every time I find one, you seem to be in the middle of it. I'm starting to wonder if it might not be simpler to just follow you around. Sadly, I have business elsewhere. Tread softly, my friend. The carefully laid trap you dismantled was clearly sanctioned by Lord Lolorito. I heard the Blades mention him as they fled. Believe me when I tell you that he is not a man to be trifled with. The Sultana's enemies grow bolder by the day, and I suspect they have the support of outside forces. Thank you. If you hadn't come along, those bastards would have surely have slaughtered us all. I would speak with, your fa with you further, but it isn't safe for us to linger here. Find me at the Coffer and Coffin later. Until then, stay safe. I shall accompany Wyston and his men. They need protection, and I need more information. Is Anon sooner, soon or later? This game seems to use it for both. I consider it a lot like bi-weekly, because bi-weekly could mean every other week, or it could mean twice a week. We never know. Ah, oh, but where are my manners? I have yet to properly introduce myself. I am Thancred, a humble scholar surveying the flow of ether in Thanalan. And I love, I love that they're all scholars. The, the tattoo on his neck is um, a tattoo given to the Circle of Knowing, um, which is a group of people who all studied at the same university, essentially. And it explains why they can give you so much exposition and knowledge about the, how the world works. Because they literally studied it. That makes a lot of sense. It is an honor and a privilege to make your- Is this tattoo reflecting off of his collar? 
Is that a bug? I don't know. It is an honor and privilege to make your acquaintance. I hope when next we meet, it is under more auspicious circumstances. Farewell. Oh no, okay. Okay, never mind. Not a bug. Not a bug. Oh, that's a different mark. Oh. Ah, wait a moment. It occurs to me that we may have... Never mind. Fare thee well. It's just the cow here. Alright. And I think that's a really cool way to tie in the fact that these people know so much. And it's not just for the exposition either. It comes up again and again that they went to this college together. In fact, that college that they went to is a main city in the Endwalker expansion that we're going. Slight spoilers. But it just goes to show how much, like, this world is already, like, fleshed out and all that. Slight. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Was that major spoilers? I don't know. Well, you don't know what it is. Sorry. I should be more careful with my spoilers. Anyway. Twelve's bless you, my friend. You risked your life to save ours. Betrayed by my own guards. Gods. I was a fool to trust those men. Lolorito owns the gods' damn brass blades. I should have questioned their motives from the start. Even so, I could hardly have predicted that the wealthiest man in Ulda w would want me dead for the heinous crimes of seeking to change the law. I'm just a merchant, for God's sakes. Well, he's trying to kill the plants at the roots. That ruthless bastard. And what of that monstrosity? Those were his own men. It beggars belief. Well, that's it. I'm finished. If I stay in Ulda any longer, I'm as good as dead. My associates, my friends, gods, even the children may not be safe if I don't disappear. And you, goddammit, if Lolorito learns of your involvement, you'll be next. I'll speak with the others and make sure your part in this stays secret. Beyond that, I don't know what to suggest. Maybe you should seek the counsel of Mistress Mamodi. She'll help countless adventurers in her time. Maybe she'll know what to do. Go, go quickly now, my friend. Lola Rito's spies may be watching. Nice. Alright. Back to Ulda we go. <laughs> when we get there in Endwalker, our first trial will be your finals extreme. The first dungeon will be a quiz on algebra. Hello, Mamadi. Settle down, Victor. You've got nothing to worry about. No one seems to know you are at the ruins. Wysten, on the other hand, is now a pariah. About as welcome round here as a rabid wolf, poor bugger. Suffice to say, that boy risked the wrath of the wrong man. Lord Lolorito, chairman of the East Ald Aldenard Training Company, generous contributor to the Order of Nalbthal and a member of the Syndicate. Didn't get where he is by leaving loose ends, that one. Which is why he ain't above killing his own men. Hells, even those blades knew what was coming. It's not like they could refuse to do their benefactors bidden. <sighs> Don't let this colour your view of Uldar, Victor. It is true that there are some here who ain't afraid to crack a few skulls if it gets them what they want. But most of us are decent folk just trying to make ends meet. You know, a lot of people call you a damn fool for risking your life to save a marked man. But I believe you did a good thing, Victor, and for that you have my respect. Listen, you've been through a lot lately. Why don't you rest a spell? I'll have the boys at the Hourglass set you up with a room. My treat. Just have a word with Atopa Potopa. Atopa Potopa, whenever you feel like staying. Hey, in rooms. And when you've got your appetite for adventuring back, 
consider taking a guild leave or two. We have a lot of requests from local looking locals looking to hire adventurers for various jobs. It would be a good way for you to earn yourself some extra gil. Uh, Eustace can tell you more about how the system works, so go and speak with him if you're interested. Ah, yes, grind quests. Nice. <gasps> joy! <laughs> Best joy! All right, next quest. I'm ready. Look what the curl dragged in. Good to see you, Victor. I'd ask what brings you, but I reckon we both know the answer to that already. Well, have I ever told you... Have I ever let you down before? No, wait, don't answer that. So it happens I know a fella by the name of... Uh, Dadanen. Uh, Dadanen, who needs a hand. He's a merchant by trade, selling precious stones to those in Uldar with the means to buy them. He's he's asked, he's asked, 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 I don't know. He's asked that I send any looking for work his way. You can find him over in the horizon if you fancy. That's in Western Thanaland, mind you. Just cross the bridge to the north of Scorpion Crossing and the road will take you there. Knowing the circles he deals in, might be he'll have some talk of the royal family that'll interest you as well. And why not make use of a chocobo porter for the journey to the horizon, if you have the gill for that, for it, that is. You'll find the chocobo stables just across the way from the quicksand. Find Mimi Gun. Mimi Gun! He'll set you straight. Well, off you go then. I haven't got all day to be holding your bloody hand. All right, all right, jeez. What if I just teleport there? Yeah! See, this is why I want to play New Game Plus, because now I don't have to travel all the way, you know? There we go. Dedanen. Hello. Victor, I presume? Hi, Mamodi said to expect you, and so I have. Welcome to Horizon. Ours is a trading settlement that sees goods in, in from the port of Vesper Bay to the west, and trade we do. Nary a dog goes by that Horizon isn't bustling with some manner of merchants and officials. They keep us running about busy, they do. Enough that I wish I had chocobo legs in place of my own, and that's why I've asked Momodi to send me any souls looking for work. Twelve, no, there's plenty of it to be done around here. Speak to me again when you're ready to make yourself some use. Can you switch starting cities in New Game Plus? Nope, unfortunately. It so happens that I have a situation that must be resolved post-haste. And I do mean post-haste. I'm plump out of uh, premium products, and my latest order has yet to arrive. If I keep my customers waiting any longer, this could irrevocably damage my reputation. What's worse, I paid my man in advance for his services. Despite his assurance that it would be a simple affair, I have heard nothing since he departed for Copperbell Mines days ago. Find Drunken Stag and give him this notice. I cannot afford any further delay. Drunken Stag. What kind of name is Drunken Stag? Ah! A, uh... What is that? Hell's Guard, Rogadin? Yeah, that makes sense. Tord Whisper, yeah. What do you want, hmm? Dedane, uh... Uh, Dedanen's product? Yeah, he's, uh... So he's upset about how long it's taking. Aw! Aluma Llama, thank you for the bits! Thank you for the well-done steak! Ah, bird! <laughs> Thank you, very generous of you. He can send all the notices he likes, but it won't change a thing. The concern has closed the mines due to some incident in the depths. It's a goddamn shame, too. Lost a decent haul just over yonder during all the chaos. Hmm. What if I go in there? 
The product you heard Dadanen go on about is a valuable gemstone known as raw Nashikite. I managed to dig up go a goodly amount just before the mines were closed off, actually. Packed it up and hauled it out, even. But then them twelve damn coblins came along. Not like any coblins I'd seen before, and hungry only for the good rocks. They had eyes for my gemstones, so I had no choice but to oblige. And the rocks! The stone torches had their hands full evacuating the mines, so they ignored the beasts. Even now, they're only concerned with keeping people out. Please, friend, if you're willing to face the coblins, could you bring me my uh, Nashalite, Nashakite? This quest is named Give It To Me Raw. All right, dead. Let's get this. <laughs> Nashu kite. The mineral of Nashu uh, Mahaka, Ma Makaraka. That's how you say your name, right? And slap. Here we go. Hello. What do you got to say? Beasts, demons, garlands. It's a pain in the bloody arse, whatever it is. How's a man supposed to feed himself? How do you fare, friend? Did you find the raw Nash Nashikite? There it is. Same color as former Uldan Sultana Nashu... Uh, Nanasha Ul Nasha's eyes. Am I running New Game Plus? You bet I am. Beautiful, isn't it? Rarer than many stones and more expensive than most. They say the green is the same as the eyes of Nanashu... Nanasha Unasha. <coughs> yeah. Who once ruled as the Sultana. This should save Dadanan from his troubles, if there's enough left. There's far less here than what I thought. I reckon those coblins made a meal of the stuff. Bloody waste. Thanks, chat. You'd like a chance to make some money, right? Then I know just how I can repay you for your kindness. Swarms of s sun mi midges have been harassing travelers along the road, connecting the horizon to here. It's gotten so bad that the brass blades have started praying, uh, paying folks to keep the roads clear. If you find it hard to believe that swarms of tiny midges could be so troublesome, then you've never seen a chocobo driven into a frenzy by one. They've already been some terrible accidents. Do your part and s slay a few swarms. After that, let Fufalupa know. I'll reward you for your trouble, and maybe even offer you more work. <laughs> Guy sounds like Bert. Bert! You mean Ernie? Is it Ernie or Bert? Yeah, Ernie. Hey, Bert. What are you doing, Bert? Say, Bert, I just spent, uh, today's allowance hiring an adventurer to do some work for us, Bert. Ernie, we needed that for dinner. Oh, sorry, Bert. I just thought, you know, they could help up old on fix up the place, clean it up a little bit, you know? The only thing we need cleaning up, Ernie, is the shit on the floor from that chocobo you brought home. Oh, but Bert... He was just out in the cold desert. What if he starved to death? Come on, Bert. Where's where's your compassion? And kill a swarm with your sword. Yeah, just slap it. Slap it like a like your sword is a fly swatter. I mean, some of the swords in here, seriously, are super duper wide. They seriously look like paddles. 
Oh, like where he's from. Yes, I did have some lore with Victor that uh, Victor in this game is from Gridania. However, you know, because of how this game works, he says he's from Uldah, but he moved to Uldah to go to the big city full of riches to make a fortune and a name for himself. Uh, but instead, he saw that there were a lot of people in trouble and people down on their luck, and so, you know, because he's got a good heart, he's going to help them uh, before he has any any means to try and get riches for himself. Greetings and salutations, adventurer. I am not a vampire. To what do I owe this? What? You've slain how many swarms of sun midges? You have my sincerest thanks. The brass blades have been struggling to keep them in check, so your assistance is greatly appreciated. Will you be staying in Horizon long? If so, there is much and more you can do to help here. Yeah, the difference between this rat and the rat in D&D is the rat in D&D fucks. This rat does not know what sex is. This rat is a precious good boy who wants to do right by everybody compared to the rat in D&D who wants to show off and stuff. Pray allow me to enlist your aid, brave adventurer. I would have you ascertain the whereabouts of a missive I sent to Lost Hope the other day. Captain Leofric is stationed there. Ever since he was transferred, we've exchanged letters, but never before has it taken this long to receive a reply. And so I fear the courier may have met with some misfortune en route. She must have made it to the central Thanalan, or the brass blades that patrol the roads between here and Scorpion Crossing would have seen something. But, if she made it as far as Black Brass Station, she would have surely delivered the letter by now. Lost Hope is practically on its doorstep. I suggest you focus your search on the road to Black Brass Station in Central Thanalan. Good luck, you will find her quickly. Bleh, bleh, bleh! Alright, Central Thanalan. Straying a little close to Scottish. Listen, I don't know what accents are. What, you think I'm some kind of professional paid voice actor? Think I'm some kind of supercomputer? Victor's cat Ursa. Yeah, basically. Okay, well, actually, he's not that clueless. <laughs> he's not that clueless. Uh. Hello. Ah, oh, a letter. Ah, oh, I've got Fufulupa's missive right here. I won't be delivering it anytime soon, though. Go to tend my- gotta tend my bird's injured leg first, even though most minor cuts can fester if ignored. Even the most minor cuts can fester if ignored. Fufulupa sent you, right? Is this a pressing matter? Why don't you take it to the rest of the way? Let's, uh, Lost Hopes just past Blackbrush Station, to the northeast. Look for the tents by the river. Alright. Uh, delivery cat boy! Cat delivery man. He doesn't know what sex is. Yeah, but you know, I'm sure Urzer knows what sex is. He's just dumb as bricks, you know. Cause Urzer, Urzer knows the wild and he knows animals. He just doesn't know what flirting is when it's not, you know, a boar hunched over doing a mating ritual. Oh, hello. I used to have a great post in the city markets. Then one day, my supervising officer decides he doesn't like the arrangement I had with the merchants. Long story short, they sent me here to protect this humble settlement, along with Leofric. And here uh, we shall remain until we die or resign, whichever comes first. Damn. Despite having no decent soil, we've managed to grow some crops. The wee ones can enjoy a proper meal on occasion. Just passing through, or will you be staying a while? Here. I have a letter. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Fufulupa sent you all this way because of a late letter. Uh, the boy is still far too earnest. Despite my demotion, he continues to call me captain. I suspect he has no idea what it means to be transferred to Lost Hope either. The Brass Blades don't give a kicker and arse about this settlement. No one in Uldah does. 
All here have been forsaken adventurer. The refugees, their protectors, and you will be too if you're seen associating with us. Thank you for the letter. Now for your own good, leave. Damn. Also, this guy looks like a demon. What the heck? I thought I told you to get out of here. What, looking for a chance to do some good? <sighs> I guess I can't force you to leave. Damn stubborn adventurers. The lot of you. Fine then, listen well. A band of outlaws has taken up residence in the Koi Koiveran Manse to the ridge to the south. Their leader has styled himself heir of the Eoland Quiveron, Quiveron the syndicate member who died in the calamity. <laughs> The Baron and his cronies are not more than a pack of jackals. They prey on the people of the Lost Hope, robbing them of what little they have. I myself can't act without endangering the refugees, as they know my face and will retaliate against Lost Hope. You, however, are not known to the bandits or their allies. If you wish to help us, then deal with the Baron. All right, local bandits. Let's teach them what for. What is the in-lore justification for Victor's non-Makote name? Uh, none. It's because uh, I like Victor Quibbles. I, I don't have an in-lore reason. I don't know, maybe he was raised by Hewers? Who knows? I haven't come up with one. I say, because I have not come up with one, I'll leave that open to interpretation. Whatever you believe that makes the most sense, that, that makes the most sense. Smack. 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 Sorry, I was just filling out my hunting log. Smack. He chose his own name when he got adventuring. I would say he chose his first name, but the second one, I don't know that anyone would choose Quibbles. Uh. I do like the it sounded cool, though. I like to give that to a lot of my characters. All right, hello. I like that they're all Lalafell. It's one thing Uldah will teach you is that all Lalafell are evil. And also, I just find, like, male Makote naming conventions a little boring because, like... Unless you canonized your, um, your Makote to be the alpha of his pack, as it were, or his, I don't know, pride, then his last name will always be Tia. That is, that is how naming conventions work. So it's done. Good. I hope that wretch died screaming. Oh, I killed him? Oh, God. Well, Da's are more prosperous than ever, some say. That may be true for the syndicate, but none of that wealth has trickled down to the small folk. It's all a mummer's farce. One day I refused to pay m play my part, and so I was made to leave the stage. Aye, my time has passed. The brass blades and the rose must look to others for guidance. Damn. There's Shola and Mithra, is there? Let me let me look up what Moon Moon Kote naming convention is. Let's see. Kote names. We're gonna drop some lore on you. Let's see. Uh, I RP'd my son Makote and he abandoned his clan name when he chose to become an adventurer. That was I didn't have a name to name myself Tia. Yeah, I'll just go with that. Yeah, most males have simple one or two syllable names. The extra H's seen in names such as B, Kuz, Posh represents a slight hissing, spitting sound that is made when the name is pronounced by the cat-like Makote. Many of the other races of Eorzea cannot accurately reproduce this sound, so the H's end up going silent when read. B, Ka, Kuz, Posh. 
Ah, uh, so it's pri and uh, kush and pachsh, like that, I guess. Uh, males do not take family names, as they are each considered the origins of new families. In place of family names, they are given a title that denotes their tribe and their position within it. For a male seeker of the sun, there are only two positions available. Breeding males, nun, pronounced nun, and all others, tia. Yeah, so if you are the breeding male, you are nun. If you are not, you are tia. All males are born as tia. Orahatia, Odtia, Tikiakatia, Tiakanun. Let's see. Keepers of the Moon. Here we go. More evidence of how important the mother is to Keepers of the Moon can be seen. So the Keepers of the Moon are the matriarchal ones. That those are the ones where the males are super rare. Um Males are also take their mother's forename, adding a suffix. So yeah, first son, ah, second son, to, third son, li. Tan. So I guess, I guess Victor could be the second son, Victo, you know. Victor, and he just changed it to Victor. Okay. So I guess... Let's see, only the keepers of the moon are more solitary lies, blah, blah, make sure of strength. It doesn't say anything about their last names. Probably add a no spoilers tag. Good idea. I'll do that. Um, no spoilers. There we go. But yeah. Yeah. Say, uh, so Victor is the second born of, uh, let's say, nine sisters or something. That's why he's so soft. He learned from his sisters. Because that's... I'm stealing that lore from Agent Washington from Red vs. Blue. I don't know. I just find that kind of funny. Because Washington is all... He, he's super nice and and all that stuff. Like, I, I think that's it. Washington is, like, the youngest of nine sisters. Or three sisters. Something like that. Victor is the kid from Loud House. Yeah, there we go. As you may have noticed, I'm in no shape to leave Lost Hope right now. So in my stead, I'd like you to return to Horizon and give this dagger to Fufulupa. Although it is just an old, unornamental dagger, it belongs to the brass blades of the rose. I, I should have given it to the boy before I came here. Hmm. You have the unfortunate displeasure of being in lost hope. The name says it all, friend. You'll find naught but hunger and despair here. Damn. Actual slums. This ornamental dagger has remained in possession of the brass blades of the rose for centuries, traditionally passed down to a new captain when the old one retires. Damn. Lore. Moon cats happen to have very few surnames, like Makaraka or Alipo. You'll see them around often. Hmm, really interesting. Yeah, I just don't know what the naming convention is for their surnames. Ah, Victor! I received word from Captain Leofric the other day. Thank you for delivering the letter for me. Ah, uh, bad news. Why do you have that dagger? Only a captain of the Brass Blades of the Rose is permitted to possess it. Captain Leofric says I am to have it? There must be some mistake. He couldn't possibly mean to tell me that. No, no, of course not. I am not worthy to wield it. Nevertheless, I shall respect the captain's wishes and take the dagger into safekeeping until he comes to reclaim it. Oh. The brass blades of the rose have need of your assistance once more, Victor. Thaumaturges from the Ossuary are presently surveying the footfalls for ancient relics. 
As, as the area is rife with wild beasts, the Horizon Garrison has been charged with their security. But Captain uh, Baldwin sent only a handful of brass blades. Despite his assurances, on the contrary, such a small unit cannot possibly be sufficient to protect our patrons. I would have you offer your assistance to my comrades. Pray travel to the foot vault and speak with Totoruna. Yeah, yeah, I, I, the spoilers are not for me. The spoilers for, are for anybody else who is watching or in the chat, because I've, I've finished the rest of Shadowbringers. I finished all the patch quests. I'm I'm all the way through. I'm caught up, but some people are not, and this is kind of a story mode for all of them. So be respectful not to go over any spoil mm, excuse me, spoilers. You can drop lore bits, but uh no spoiling, you know. Hard to find streams without spoilers because most people are very far into the game, yeah. A bleeding adventure come to help. I ain't heard nothing from Captain Baldwin about this. He said trust. He said trusted men only. Any road, we've got this under control. And besides, this operation ain't got nothing to do with Fupa Lupa. Boy's got a stick up his arse, the size of a sabotender. Uh, and it's no wonder the captain told him to stay in Horizon. Damn, jeez, no need to be mean. You know, speaking of sabotenders, you're not just a prick, you're the whole cactar. Hello. Hey, adventurer, mind running a message to Crescent Cove for us? Captain Baldwin's planning some festivities for the thaumaturge, see? And he wants them treated to the finest food and drink. Nothing but the best for our distinguished guest, eh? Head west south of the village and tell Raph that he's to deliver a bounty of fresh fish to Horizon for the feast. Storm on the horizon, get it? Fish! Hello, Raph. Uh, fresh fish for Captain Baldwin? Uh, of course, of course! Uh, we will do our best, sir. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we've had a poor catch in recent days on account of the rough seas. Uh, more boats should be returning soon, but I cannot promise that their catch will be pleased. But worry not, sir. The captain will have his fish, I swear it. Hmm, you don't seem too sure about that. Go is shaped like the moon when it first waxes and last wanes. It's from there our village takes the name Crescent Cove. Times were good here until the calamity befell. Now the water flows in ways they didn't. Fish no longer are where they were, and halls are too scarce to make it worth the while. Hmm. It's interesting to see, to hear about how the calamity has shaped the world. Uh, should I save side quests for when I want to level up other jobs, or do them with my main job? You can totally ignore side quests. If you're talking about the side quests that are like... The normal exclamation point, you can totally ignore those. They give a paltry amount of XP and there are better ways to level up that are more efficient. If you're talking about the side quests with the pluses, I say do those with any job you want to level up because even those might not give much HP, but they do unlock things. Yeah, yellow side quests are just flavor. Hmm... You are an adventurer, are you not? I know this is sudden, but I have no one else to turn to. Last night, a gang of bandits from the Quiveron Mance were up in their cups, and I overheard them discussing their plans. It seems they've come to collect gemstones stolen from the Copperbell Mines. A uh, national kite, I think I heard one say? They are to meet with the co-conspirator soon, at the footfalls. Uh, what? What? What did you say? See, uh, this is what, this is why I think A Rum Reborn Story is kind of okay now, because it all ties in and all comes together. Illicit exchanges and shadowy dealings! The brass blades cannot abide such malfeasance! Forgives my eavesdropping, Victor. I came to the Crescent Cove merely to thank you in person. I'd never imagined I'd uncover a criminal conspiracy right outside Horizon Gates! We must act quickly if we are to apprehend these thieves. I will notify Captain 
Ball to win that once! Oh, you're the captain now, though. Oh, what? No, wait! You mustn't... Oh, gods. You must stop him before it's too late. Captain Baldwin himself is working with the bandits. Oh, no! Oh, shit! What a twist! Captain Baldwin, I have words to say with you. All right, let's do normal. Sink down to level 18. Captain Baldwin, sir! I've discovered something shocking, something horrible. Something, someone has been stealing gemstones from Copper Bell Mines and... Wait, those gauntlets, those boots. Why, you're one of Quiveron's men. Sir, that man is a thief and a scoundrel. And? What of it? The coin's good, and that's what counts. What? Captain Baldwin? Are you working with these men? It cannot be. I told you to stay in Horizon, Fufulupa. You didn't- it didn't have to be like this. They'd get their Nasha kite, I get my gill, and no one would be the wiser. Uh, but, sir, what if your crimes are uncovered? What if Lord Lolorito finds out? You goddamn fool. Don't you see? I am acting under the authority of Lord Lolorito himself. What? No, that cannot be true. I'm Mario now. I went from Dracula to Mario. Well, I guess we're sticking with that. Why do you think... People join the Brass Blades, Fufulupa. To serve and protect? Ha! We're not the bloody flames here. We do this for the coin. You there, adventurer. Do you remember me? Well, I remember you. <gasps> Wait, I thought I killed this guy. I'm Sir Baron Von Quiveron, 4th Esquire. You killed my brother. Oh. <laughs> I am Sir Baron Von Quiveron, the 4th Esquire. You killed my brother. Prepare to die. I'm pretty sure that's a... That's a... Reference. Well, that settles it. It's clearly in everyone's best interest that both of you die. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't have my three yet. I just have my one and two. All right, let's kill the archers first, actually. They should be easy. There we go. Cinematic mode. Die! Kick. He's dead. <laughs> Victor the six-fingered Makote. Damn you both, you're ruining everything. Does Victor have six fingers? He does not, no. Throw his spear, Victor. Aw, oh, I didn't want to do this, man. Oh, <gasps> it's Leofric! Uh, I forgot his his accent. That's enough, Baldwin. Your partner is dead, and your plans are undone. You've no reason left to fight. Stay out of this, Lo Leofric. I don't take orders from you. I may have spared your life before, but if you interfere, I will not show you mercy. And what mercy will he show you, I wonder? You who have done so much in another man's name. What are you blathering about? Every fisherman in Crescent Cove knew about your meeting, you arrogant fool. Quiveron's men couldn't keep their mouths shut. Imagine Lord Lolorito's surprise when he learns that a rank-and-file brass blade was using his name to advance a personal agenda. 
He knows. Seven L's. But I'm a captain. He would never. I was once a captain too, remember? And we both know what happened to me. Well fought, boy. You've done the brass blades of the Rose proud. Captain Leofric! Captain Bla Baldwin! He, he said that Lord Lolorito... Lord Lolorito won't waste his time on a small-scale smuggling operation. This is all Baldwin's doing. What else did he say? That all our brethren are no better and that each and every one cares for aught but coin? Ha! Mere excuses to justify his schemes. Aye, we've no shortage of greedy sods, but who'd probably sell their own mothers into slavery, slavery if the price was right? But there are men like you, Fufulupa, men good and true, whom the small folk respect. Which is why I gave you the dagger. The brass blades of the rose need a leader with honor, and you're the most honorable man I know. Oh, 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 Captain! Thank you all for your help, Victor. The captain and I will escort Captain Baldwin back to Horizon. Pray, visit me in town next you can return. Yeah, he's turned full Mario. He went from Dracula to Mario because I guess... I don't know, it just felt more natural. I, I kept wheezing in, easing in and out of Dracula. Lord Lolorito, yeah. Ooh, almost knocked over my water. Here we go. Hello, Sammy. Welcome back, Victor. So much has happened. Captain uh, Baldwin has been arrested and stripped of rank, which means the brass blades of the Rose no longer have a captain. Until a new one is designated, I've been ordered to serve as acting captain of the Horizon Garrison. Though doubtless this is only temporary arrangement, I will do my utmost to represent my brethren and protect the people of Horizon. Thank you, Victor, for your service to the Sultanate. You are a true hero. Hell yeah. Undid a conspiracy. Saved the blast brass blades of the Rose. I salute you, honored friend. As acting captain, I should be much obliged if you would grant me a personal request. In our efforts to ascertain the full extent of the former captain's, captain's corruption, we have been poring over his personal correspondence. Our search unearthed this sealed letter addressed to a man named Owine. But he is one of the Sultan Swan's elite. I can think of no reason why he should have any dealings with Baldwin. We now know that the former captain was consorting with the uh, coalition of criminals. Could it be that Owine was was too? Owin, Owine, Owin, Owin, no wine, Owin, no wine, Owin, no wine. Sorry. This letter may serve as evidence of the collusion, and I dare not tamper with it myself. But given the evidence of recent days, I knew not whom to trust with this information until now. I've chosen you, Victor. Pray bear the letter to Mistress Mamori of the Quicksand and relate the circumstances of its discovery. Not only is she a staunch supporter of the Sultan, uh, Sultana, but she is well acquainted with the Sultan Swan. She will know how to best to proceed. I like his little hunch, like, uh, nah. Alright, back to Ulta. Yes, yes, long live the Sultana. May her reign travel far and wide. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go refill on drink, use the bathroom, clear up, get some snacks. Break time.
feel a way for talk at a time. Yes, the time you wear a hat, me all a nail away first. Nail away for top hat time. It's the best time in the history of mankind. Hello. Now return with Nilla Wafers. Never mind, they've gone bad. I just checked, I just checked the expiration date. I need to throw these away. Instead, I have a backup. Never mind, these have gone bad too. I need to eat my snacks faster. My gummy bears are bad. My Nilla wafers are bad. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grab a new snack. Hold on. Both of these are bad. Spicy potato chip time. It's potato chips lined with jalapeno peppers. Spicy potato chip time. And these are definitely not past due. They're not expired. I, I made sure to check the date. But you may hear you may hear some sniffling because I do not handle spice very well. Right. Nice. Ah, Victor, it's been too long. The Danon tells me you've been keeping busy in Horizon. I want you to know that I'm grateful for everything you've done for the people of Uldar. Even though you've seen the cedars, seedier side of the city, you've continued to help your fellow man. Believe me, the folk around here love you for it. Hmm? What is it? You look like you've got something to say. Uh, got something to give you. <laughs> I must scream, and yet I cannot. I'm a silent protagonist, and I must scream. So that's what all this is about. Fufulupa's thinking of Owen might have been in league with Baldwin, and that this letter could be proof of something shady. Well, he needn't worry. Owen's a lawyer, uh, a lawyer at... Uh, a, as loyal a Sultan Sorn as I've ever known. He, I haven't the foggiest what to say, no, what this says, but... Wait a minute. Wasn't Owen the one who... Oh, hells. I've got a bad feeling about this. Listen, Victor, I know I... I think I know what this is all about, but I need you to swear to keep quiet. If you'd rather wash your hands of this business, I won't hold it against you. But if you're determined to see it through to the bitter end, say the word and I'll explain. I would like you to stop playing the pronoun game. Can I count on your discretion, Victor? If so, then listen closely. Hmm. The outside world believes Uldar to be a sultanate ruled by Sultana Nanamo Unamo. Truth is, though, it's the six wealthiest city citizens that hold mo the most sway, the syndicate. Be that as it may, the Sultana still got the support of the people. 
but she might struggle to keep even- Oh my god, it's the twins! Look! They're just there in the background, hanging out! Whoa! But she might struggle to keep even that if a certain incident becomes public knowledge. It pains me to say it, but her grace's crown, the symbol of the royal dynasty, has been stolen. And Owen owns a sultan swan who's been charged with guarding it that night. I'd bet anything this letter was written by the bastards who made off with the crown. It can't be a coincidence that a man we know to have been fraternizing with the thieves had a letter for Owen of all people, at, at this of all times. You need to take this to the man himself, Victor. Tell him Mamodi sent you, and that it concerns a lost heirloom. If it looks as though his fellows need help, I want you to lend it to him. The future of our fair city may depend on it. What's my opinion on Gunbreaker? Uh, in, in, uh, none. Because I, I have not played it that much to have an opinion on it. Really. I, uh, I unlocked it, so it's at level 60. But, um, you know, so far. Nothing really. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Uh, cheers. What is that emote? No, it's... Um... Toast, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's Bracky. All right, letter to Owen. Where are you? Alchemist Guild, on my way. Sworn Elite. The heart of the Sworn lies beyond. State your business. Pardon? Did you say a lost heirloom? <clears throat> Proceed. <gasps> Do I get to meet... Uh... Oh, no. Okay, so this is like the lead of like... Hmm. Attention, sir. Oh, what voice to give this guy? Well, mad adventure. What brings? No, I'm not going to do that. Is Victor LGBT? I guess he's pansexual. He is in in D and D. He's pan. I haven't, I haven't really put much thought into his sexuality in this game, but I think he he identifies as a friend. Well, mad adventure. What bring? What business brings you here to this day? A letter. Very well, let's see it. He identifies as bottom. Sorry I keep forgetting to put chat back on the screen. Have you read this adventurer? No, not at all. Are you about to shoot me and tell me the game was rigged from the start? I see. But you have some inkling as to its contents, I think. Mistress Mamodi has doubtless explained to you the significance of the crown, and what its loss could mean for her grace, the Sultana. This theft shames the Sultan Sworn, and me most of all. The blame is mine, you see. I grew lax in my duties, and in a moment of carelessness... No, it will do no good to recount the tale now. Since the hour of the theft, we've searched frantically for any signs, any whispers as to the whereabouts of the crown. We have found nothing. The identity of the thieves and their motives seem fate, fated to remain a mystery until you arrive bearing this ransom note. In it, the criminals state their price for the return of Her Grace's crown. And though it pains me to say it, I fear I have no choice but to, to acquiesce to their demands. Too much is at stake to do otherwise. 
The crown symbolizes her grace's birthright and identifies her as the custodian of the Ul legacy. It must be recovered. I will travel to the unholy heir and pay them their ransom. Though I am not foolish enough to meet these men alone as they stipulate, I dare not bring the host of my comrades lest the thieves take f fright. Friend, would you consent to being present for the exchange? Mistress Mamodi has spoken of you in the most glowing terms, and I have never yet had reason to question her judgment. On behalf of all those still loyal to the Sultana, I beseech you, help us in our hour of need. You got it. I am the muscle. The ultimate friend sexual. Yeah, that's exactly how he is. All right, where is it? There it is. See, so yeah, I'll just go clean UI. There we go. Keep the map on screen. What is my favorite mount to use? Definitely the Chocobo, the company Chocobo. Just because, I don't know, I've grown fond of it, you know. Sentimental value. Perhaps his original name was Victo before he changed it to Victor, and Quibbles was a childhood nickname he made his own to honor an old friend. Aww. I don't know that he's like, would take on somebody else's name for honor. But that, I do like that. That is very, that is very sweet. I've come as agreed. Now, show me the crown. Aye, you'll have your precious crown once we've been duly compensated. Do you think me a fool? Have assurance that I, uh, have I? What assurance have I that you honor your part of the arrangement? Now, now, Owen, you're the least trustworthy man here. Not only was the crown stolen on your watch, but it looks to me as if you violated the terms of our exchange. Did we not say that you were to come alone? And given that you are not alone, what guarantee have we that this isn't a company of archers surrounding us even as we speak, ready to feather me and my men the moment they catch glimpse of the crown? You have made mock of our trust. The deal is off. Oh, jeez. Wait, here's your payment, as promised. <laughs> you can tell their budget was very tight. Aye, tis the real thing. <laughs> A thousand thanks to you, boy. You've succeeded where scores of thieves have failed. And now, at long last, we have it. The power to create an army of undying soldiers. The traitors spurn. No, no, it can't be. What have I done? Surely you must have wondered what it was that you were handing over. What it was that seemed as valuable to us as the crown seemed to you. Or did you assume you were feeling... We were feeling charitable. Ah, oh, but you must feel terrible knowing that you've brought us the doom of the Sildi. Worry not, boy. We'll grant you a quick death and spare you further ign ignominy. Ignominy? Oh god, there's a lot of them. Not on my watch. There's too many, Victor. Run! Run while you still can! I, I will do my duty. It's your duty to so uh... It's your duty to serve the Sultana, lad, and you'll be doing it for a good while yet. <gasps> Is it? F oh, Papa Sean! Sultan Swan, put these thieves to the sword and secure the crown. Uh, 
Sultan's sworn. Ha! No matter. Kill them all. Yeah, Papa Sean, he was a Sultan Sworn the whole time. That's cool. Da 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 da. I love this light motif, this one. It's like the light motif of the scions. Da 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 da. Yeah, a lot of the dialogue I skipped my first time through. And maybe maybe he said it earlier and I wasn't paying attention. There's a lot of dialogue in this game. Yeah, he didn't? Okay, yeah, I thought so. Ah, uh, no you don't. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck! Cat stuck! Cat stuck! Yep. Damn, look at him. Stepping up, being in the front lines. Oh, they're dying. Oh, jeez. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Oh. Shit. Oh no, Owen, 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 I gotta go save Owen. Okay, Owen's doing fine. Owen's alright. Middle some fools. You know not whom you face. How do you activate New Game Plus? By going to duty and clicking New Game Plus. Hearken to me, denizens of the abyss. Slay these interlopers and feast upon their souls. Oh, jeez. There we go. Easy peasy. Master Papa Sean, but, but why? How? The general saw you sneaking into the vaults, Owen. He suspected something was a food and ordered us to keep an eye on you. The flame general? He ordered you to look after me? Master Papa Sean, more of them to the north. After them, Sultan Sorn. They have the crown. This lot, uh, this lot sought only to delay us. Let's speak again back in the city. Oh, they've got the paladin pants. Mm, hello, cloaked figure. The source of his strength becomes clear. What if you sound like Christopher Walken? You may have bested the golem, but you will not fare so well this day. Darkness. O mournful voice of creation. Send unto me a creature of the abyss, my thralls a command, that I may smite mine enemies. Here we go, demon time. <laughs> Come to me, kingdom high, I mean, voice of creation. Your very being imperils the plan. You cannot be suffered to live. All right, time to 1v1 a demon. Soon you shall... You shall take your vile gifts to the grave. Ah, but I have tanking powers. Whence springs this... Petronatural might? Uh, well, I eat eggs every morning. Make sure to eat breakfast. I do about a dozen push-ups. 
Uh, don't want to do too much and tire yourself out, you know? Hey, Fangrid's here! You certainly have a knack for getting yourself into trouble. No matter. All shall fall before me. Yeah, plenty of juice. Lots of apple juice. No mortal should possess such strength. That. Keep it up, Victor. We've almost had him. And slap. There we go. Did you just use spirits within? Excuse me, I'm crunching. Doc Tabasco, thanks for the five bucks. Just finished cleaning my keyboard. Thanks for the background narrative and all the other cool stuff you do. Aw. Ah, that the wisdom of the Paragon should be brought low by mere immortals. Ooh. Well, that was overly dramatic. Paragons. This is indeed a disturbing revelation. We had long suspected the involvement of the bringers of chaos, Asians, to give them their name. But we could not be sure they were responsible for the recent disturbances until now, as if the Sultanate needed any more enemies. What do you know about the Asians? Hmm? We have Charlian, uh... Have we Charlians crossed paths with Asians before? Well, we've certainly... Wait, I don't recall telling you about my homeland. Ah, yes, that's right. You're one of the gifted. Oh, we asked him about being Charlian. You know, this mark... This marks the third time I've found you in the, the midst of trouble. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you're a lodestone for it. Anyway, I'm glad I started following you around. Who knows what the grand conspiracy you will stumble upon next. I jest, I jest. And I truly been watching your every move. I wouldn't have taken so long to interfere, intervene in your latest altercation. But all's well that ends well, eh? Our masked friend is no more. And while I very much doubt we've seen the last of his kind, his demise will likely grant us at least some respite. And on... On that note, I must away. Until next time, Victor. I'm glad people like the voices that I give, even if it's not authentic British. Mmm. Damn. Grape was my favorite flavor, too. Alright, back to the Alchemist Guild. And time to eat more chips. Will we get another go through of the Hildebrand quest? Maybe? At least the first at least the ARR ones, because they're really good. And that way, you can see it from the beginning with the zombies. They are long. They're the longest ones, though. I don't know. I'm in two minds about it. Have I done the Heavensward and Stormblood ones? Yeah. In fact, I finished the Stormblood ones recently, and they were really good. All right, Papa Sean. Does it surprise me to see... No, does it surprise you to see me dress so, Victor? I was once Sultan Sorn, you know. Though it's been 15 years since I put down my sword, 
and took up the role of the station master. It is a, it is a capacity in which I am no less proud to serve, lest you doubt. Whenever her grace ventures outside the gates, I have the honor of protecting her person. Never before have I seen her so despondent as the news of the crown's theft reached her ears. Oh, but thanks to your valiant efforts, she has returned to her former vibrant self. You have the gratitude of every Sultan Sword Victor. So that civilian was the Sultana in disguise. Lilira was Nanamo. Huh. Exalted vessel of Nordthal, guardian of Thanalan, 17th ascendant to the throne of Uldar, her royal majesty, Nanamo Ulnamo presides. I thought that was Long obvious. Live, I don't know, Glory but I'm dumb and I skip stuff. Forever may she Forever may oh she god, reign. she's the sink. They regaled me with tales of a champion amongst champions, ones whose tireless service to the crown merited the highest honor we might bestow. Oh god, the accent. Hello, tiny strawberry. Never did it occur to me that it might be you. Bring it far! Or rather, an oversized strawberry. Betokening our gratitude and esteem, I, Nanamo Ulnamo, Sultana of Ulda, confer upon you this gift. Yeah, her... Her accent is rough. <laughs> Raubon? Your grace. Raubon's all right. that our champion is my personal guest at the banquet. Ooh. As you command, your grace. If what they say is true, Ulda owes you a great debt. Does Victor just refer to every person he meets by the first descriptive words that come to his mind? Nobody thinks it. He mostly just says hi. <laughs> hi. Even, even like, instead of saying your highness, he goes, hi, <laughs> to Nanamo. Hello. I am Raubarn al-Din. With the consent of her grace, I oversee the affairs of the Sultanate. I also have balls the size of the entirety of Uldar. They're so heavy, it's hard to walk around with how massive they are. Brave souls are few and far between in these times. I count my blessings when I find one. Her grace invites you to join her at the coming banquet. I trust I will see you there. An honor, sir. Indeed. Come, hero. Until then, for the sake of her grace and the glory of the Sultanate, may you walk in the light of the crystal. You know how, you know the saying falls, balls? Those are mine. <laughs> They're mine now. <laughs> Seriously, Raubon is the biggest badass and I love him. The voice of Raubon sing sings Shadowbringers? Yeah, he does. He does, yeah. Um, But yeah, like, at, what's really neat is at this point, like, I don't know, like level 15, 16, 17 levels in, and they acknowledge what you did and pr praise you for it, and now you have a reputation amongst the world now. Pretty neat. By the 12, Victor. For an adventure to receive personal invitation from a grace is unprecedented. Seats at the banquet are offered only to the most distinguished individuals. You'll be dining with some of the most influential people in Uldar. There are, of course, certain protocols calls we have uh, must be observed, but I am no authority on them. Fret not, however. Mistress Mamodi has long been responsible for familiarizing foreign guests with our customs. Pray return to the quicksand and speak with her. She will tell you all you need to know. Ah, time to get dressed. Time to get dressed all fancy.
And at this point in the journey, you have nothing to wear. Oh god, what am I gonna wear to the banquet? I don't even have an outfit. I guess I'll just go back into my vanilla outfit. You know, no need to be in adventuring gear, right? Yeah, we do now. That is right. Unfortunately, one of them is, um... You know... Canonically, I get later. <laughs> so I'm not gonna wear that. Noble Gallade, thank you for gifting a, bra uh, a sub to Bracky. Brachyzoid. Welcome back, Victor, and congratulations on your invite to the big soiree. To be honest, I never imagined I'd be explaining these procedures to you. It's usually only foreign, uh, only foreign dignitaries who get to hear me prattle on and on about royal traditions. Any road, I know you're a busy man, so I'll keep it short and sweet. In accordance with ancient custom, all guests of this banquet are required to wear a pair of ceremonial earrings made specially for the occasion. They're meant to symbolize... Actually, forget about that. This was meant to be a short version. Ahem. <clears throat> Being of a design unique to the occasion, the earrings serve as security measure. The Sultan Sworn won't let you near the hall without them. Your set should be ready and waiting for you at the Goldsmiths Guild. Mistress Serendipity is expecting you, so you want to head there now. Once you've got them, bring them here and we'll continue. Alright. I also like that goldsmith guild leader's name, Serendipity. Most of the story, the warrior light, if light is homeless or maybe has a tiny apartment, yeah. We mostly stay at the inn. I think the, that's the canon. Is we stay in the inns or at whatever the scions place that keeps us. How is it I make my HUD like this? Uh, well, I have macros, right? These buttons down here, I have as macros to hide the UI. So if you see, you know, hotbar on, off. So this turns all the hotbars off. And it also copies, uh, you know, hotbars from another job or class onto the current hotbar, kind of like a menu. Oh, whoops. Yeah, it's neat, right? Very convenient. Greetings, is there something I can help you with? Ah, Victor, your earrings are right here. I crafted them myself. I'll have you know. I think you'll be very pleased. In case Mistress Momoda, I'm sorry, I'm a little too close to your <laughs> Can I have my earrings, please? The box is locked and I'm not permitted to give you the key. It's the final safeguard, you see. Only designated individuals are authorized to distribute the earrings to guests. In this instance, the person in question is none other than Mistress Momodi, so you'll need her to open the lockbox on your behalf. Pardon the inconvenience, but the Sultan Sworn takes her grace's safety very seriously. Yeah, isn't she pretty? Look at her. She's very pretty. She's cute, right? Look at her outfit. Very stylish. Make a vid showcasing your hot bar macros. Uh, I think there's a video out there kind of giving you the general gist of how to do this. Her facial structure, geez, how shallow. Imagine, imagine rating someone on so based on something they can't control, shorty. Oh, that was Boss Anna. I thought that was Bracky. I don't know why. Sorry, Bracky. Picked up your earrings yet, Victor? Yep, here it is. Welcome back, Anna. How was the shot? Let me just... Oh, well now. Looks like the Guildmaster outdid herself with this pair. You'd best take good care of these earrings. If they fell into the wrong hands, gods only know what might happen. Now then, I hope you're feeling sociable, Victor, because you're about uh, to hobnob with Uldar's elite. Let me know when you're ready to head to the banquet. I am short. Oh, oh you're Korean. Oh, I see. All right, let's go back to our starting gear because we are peasants and hide our sword. No open carry in the in the Sultan Sworn's room. 
Royal reception. Oh, I need to talk to Mamodi again. This is it, Victor. Your big debut in Uldar's high society. The banquet is being held in the f fa uh, fragrant chamber. Head over to the royal promenade and Bartholomew will show you in. Oh, but be sure to put on your earrings first, or he'll send you packing. Right, well, I reckon that's everything. Try not to let all the pomp and ceremony get to you. Just be yourself and you'll be fine. But what if I'm a weirdo? Alright, let's put on the earrings. Yeah, so here's an example of quest rewards that they do give you, which are quest-required rewards, you know? They'll give you those, but they won't give you a lot of things. What if they think I'm weird? What if they laugh at my curled fingers? What if they make fun of my hibiscus? I'm going to meet the Sultanate already? Yeah! Because I did a lot of things, a lot of like... I basically uncovered a little conspiracy with the Brass Blades. Help stop, like, I, I retrieve the crown. Hell yeah. Hello, Bartholomew. A banquet hosted by Her Grace the Sultana is due to begin shortly. Attendance is by invitation only. Please make your way for please make way for arriving guests. We are honored to receive you, my lord. Please proceed inside. Yep, he recognized my earrings. Oh, look at everybody having fun. Is that Papa Sean? Oh, nice of you to make it. All hail the Sultana. Your grace. Raubon. <laughs> By right this is of the great. Royal House of Ul, I, Nanamo, 17th of my line, have summoned you here. We are graced this day by the presence of a hero to Uldar, and dear friend to the crown. Honored guests, I give you our champion! Hey, <laughs> that's me! Hi! And with that, I bid you enjoy the feast! Who? Not to spoil your appetite, but Uda is hardly so bountiful as this meal would have you believe. While we gorge ourselves, children starve in the streets, nor can her grace do aught to help them. She is thwarted at every turn by those on the syndicate who derive their wealth from the workers' poverty. Damn. Beneath her mask of stately serenity, she is aghast at the plight of her subjects. <clears throat> But there will be no hope for the masses until the crown is restored to power. I am truly grateful for all you have done for Uldar. But there is so much more to do. <laughs> Worker, time to unionize. That light, what is it? Oh, you want to see my Jolly Rancher? Look, isn't it shiny? I found it on the so ground. So bright, almost like by the Twelve. Tell me true, have you been troubled by strange dreams of late? Visions of the crystal? Mayhap you put them down to an excess of ether? Oh, that's what people keep telling me. Yes, you are like they were. Again with the pronoun game. Allow me to explain. Before you came to Eorzea, there were others like you who fought the primals. Though they were not of this land, when the Galian Empire threatened the realm, they helped bring together the three grand companies. The Warriors of Light. And they stood with us at Cartano, that fateful day five years ago, the day we lost them. None who survived have forgotten the hero's sacrifice. Nor would any man deny they fought alongside us. 
But the names of these heroes come not to our lips. The once familiar pages of their story are now blank to us. And in our mind's eye, their faces are not but silhouettes amid a blinding glare. It is for this reason that we have come to call them the Warriors of Light. Oh, 1.0 one players, you, if you prefer. I cannot help but think of them and of what you might achieve. You must protect that crystal at all costs. It is a gift from Hydaelyn, mother of all, and one she gave to you for a reason. Yours is no ordinary tale. If I am right, the fate of the realm may yet hang upon your deeds. Only heroes and martyrs are fit to bear such a burden. Let us pray you are the former. Ah, uh, oh, I had too much catnip. Heroes and martyrs are the same thing. Not true. Yeah, and here, here's Blade the Battle of Cartano. This is the uh, flashback to five years ago. This was what the cinematic was showing. Victory belongs to the bold. Show those Imperial whore sons what we're made of. I'm gonna mute for a bit while Your he left chips. left flank buckles. Divert the barracudas. Oh yeah, I saw what, someone made a joke one time when they first saw Merlewib and they're like, nobody told me this was a good game. Bid them hold that position though it cost them their lives. The Yellow Serpents are in need of succor. Pray, send the White Wolves to their aid. The adventurers risk life and limb for our cause. We must not fail them. Is aught amiss? No, it is nothing. Oh, oh, bloody hells! The barrier won't go down so easily! Eyes forward! We are being watched. Raging Bull, calling Bloodthorn. Bloodthorn, respond! Respond, damn you! This is Raging Bull. What news? We're surrounded by a blaze. There is no way out. God preserve, what is that thing? What's going on? Speak to me! God damn it! We cannot hold much longer! <laughs> Mad Snake! Mad Snake! Answer me! You can't, you can't expect us to take this scene seriously with a Metal Gear reference. Damn it! Damn it all to the seventh hell! 
Yeah, ARR's presentation, it's, it, it's a little rough. What of the Barracudas? Can they not be reached? Sorry, Admiral. Shell's not working. What of our own? I cannot say, my lady. That monstrosity appears to be disrupting our communications. We must keep trying. Call till they respond. Yes, my lady. Admiral, General, we can do no more. We must give the order to withdraw. I will not forsake Louis Soir. General, please. Victory may belong to the bold, but there will be no victor this day. Yeah, because I wasn't there yet. It's five years later. <laughs> you know this to be true. Let us not sacrifice lives in vain. The adventurers fight bravely, but to no avail. Let them withdraw, and let us be the ones to stand with Louis Soi. Delay previous orders. All Maelstrom units are commanded to fall back effective immediately. Give the foreign levy priority. Let the main host cover their retreat and bring up the rear. Oh yeah, Link Pearls are basically earpieces, yeah. They're like sending stones. Damn it! Relay the order. All flames are to withdraw. I don't care if our Link Shells are useless. You still have a working pair of legs, don't you? Well, use them, you bloody halfwit! <laughs> I love how each commander commands their forces a different way. <laughs> the outcome of this battle was long since decided. Better to retreat now than risk a massacre. Yep, there it is, Bahamut laying waste to the land. This dark, stifling presence. Who or what? Who is disrupting their comms? I think it's just fog of war. We go to take our place beside Archon Louisois. To your positions. But yeah, or atmospheric interference. Like, a calamity is happening and ether is being sucked out of the atmosphere. So... I imagine, you know, a lot of things are going haywire. I know that's the the cop-out answer, like, oh, magic, but like, I don't know. It's kind of the best they got. Imarat way, kiss Katoga hearts water dawns. Seize me again, these doom the only lamb rides a dying dawn. Saying, oh, it's magic is a valid excuse so long as the magic system makes sense. Yeah, and it does. I, I say it does in this world. Whew. How you feeling, Victor? Oh, man, I had the weirdest dream. They said you fainted in the middle of one of general stories. I had to have a <laughs> have you carried back to the hourglass. I reckon you made quite an impression on your fellow guests, though probably not the sort you intended. Sure you're getting enough rest, Victor. The life of an adventurer can be pretty taxing. Head cannon. Victor sleeps a lot. Because <laughs> he's a cat. I should... Uh... I'll just say character lore instead of headcanon because it's it's if it's head if it's my character and I say all headcanon is canon because it's my character. 
I'm gonna say character lore. Victor sleeps a lot. Any road, I'm glad to see you back to normal. No offense, but looking after you is getting a bit tiresome. Oh, before I forget, the general left a message for you. Said that when you're feeling up to it, you should come and see him at the Hall of Flames. Probably wants to finish the story he was telling when you fell asleep. <laughs> oh god, I hope I didn't disrespect Raubon. Ah, I don't have my retainers. Um, okay then. True headcanon would be all Makote sleep a lot, yeah. Now that's a real headcanon. Uh, let me not, um... Okay, cool. To the Hall of Flames. I, I still need to join the Immortal Flames. They're the final Grand Company that I haven't ranked up to whatever, Sergeant, Lieutenant, whatever yet. Because I've gotten the Maelstrom and the Twin Adder up there. You get uh, servants. Yeah, servants. It's okay, we pay them. Don't worry. And they could always quit if they wanted to. Is there a reward for getting all three? No, but it's just, you know, nice. I've been waiting for you, Victor. I trust you are fully recovered. Good, because there is much work to be done. Work that I would have you do. Man, you get to talk to Raubon directly. I don't think you get that with any of the other leaders, do you? Like, to take on this quest to go to the other city-states? Listen well, Victor. This will take some time to explain. You do? Oh, nice. I prepared these letters for my counterparts in the Eorzean Alliance. Five years ago, we looked on powerless as our brothers and sisters were taken from us at Cardano. By, first by the Garleans, and then by the thrice damn primal called forth by their treachery. Not a day goes by that I do not think of my fallen comrades, and of the warriors of light of whom no trace remained. The tragedies of the Calamity are not so easily, easily forgotten, nor should they be. In remembering all we've lost, we've reminded we're reminded of what we still have. And so I mean to mark the fifth anniversary of the Battle of Cardinal with a memorial service honoring the fallen. It is my hope that my counterparts in the Alliance will agree to do the same. And I would have you bear my words to them as my personal envoy. Why you? Because your deeds mark you out as the nearest thing I have to a warrior of light. I can think of none more worthy of the role. The question is, will you accept? Then it is agreed. You will journey to Gradania and Limsa Lamenza as my official representative. Now, that's a great many moms to travel, but I've neither the time nor patience to wait around while you do it on foot. By the way, they're gonna say, um, their system of measurement is literally the imperial system, but the words are shifted a little bit. So mile, mom, inch, ilm, feet, foam. So just look at the starting letter and then you'll know how far it is. I hereby grant you permission to use the airship routes connecting the three city-states. This pass serves as proof of your privileges. Yeah, yams for yards. Gone all the days when Imperial travel was available to all. The ever-present threat of Imperial attack has forced us to impose drastic restrictions out on of certain... out of concern for public safety. These passes only granted when circumstances demanded, as in this case. 
though there were others who insisted you be granted one regardless. Aye, Victor. I am not alone in seeing it. Your potential is plain. But I've said enough. In the name of the Sultana, I bid you go forth. See for yourself if the wonders of the realm for which the Warrior of Light risked all. The Warriors of Light risked all. Rise to your calling and fulfill your promise. And should your path be barred by man or beast, strike fast and true, for victory belongs to the bold. Now go, Victor, and head and heed the crystal's guidance, should you ever lose your way. All right. Mamodi! I'm, a gra I'm, a, I'm graduating. I'm gonna head out to the big wide world. Go out to the big wide world and make a name for myself and stuff. That's a more fitting to metric though, since metric is a system, imperial is a bunch of random things. Yes, it is, and it's dumb. It's very dumb, very dumb and silly. Now, one thing that I wish they retroactively included, or one thing that would have made A Realm Reborn better, I think, is once you travel to the city-states, they had like a little intro narration of what the city-state is like. You know, just like how they would do with the new areas in each expansion. That would be nice. That would have been a nice little engagement. Ah, back from your meeting with Raoban, are you? What did the big man have to say? Well, he said I have to travel the world. Is that a fact? Personal envoy of the Flame General himself. So you'll be bearing the man's, the great man's words to the leaders of the Alliance, will you? And by airship? Fuck me, that's an honor and half, that is. But I can't think of anyone who deserves it more. I'm proud of you, Victor. I truly am. Now, I dare say Raoban told you this, but not many people get to go on airships these days. In fact, most folk go to their graves having never once seen Eorzea from above. Poor buggers, buggers shuffle off to meet Thal, having never known the blues of Limsa Liminza's shimmering seas, or the myriad greens of leafy Gridania. But not you, Victor. You'll see those sights and more, and everywhere you go, you'll find fascinating folks with fascinating tales to tell. The people you meet, the places you go, savour these experiences. For they are priceless all. Saying that, it'd be remiss for me if I didn't remind you to be careful out there. Ulda ain't the only place better beset by troubles, as you'll discover when you visit Limsa and Gridania. Truth be told, that might well be exactly what the General wants you to realise. I think he knows what kind of man you are, Victor. What? And what kind's that, you ask? Well, the kind that can't resist sticking his nose in none of the people's business, of course. And don't you ever go changing. Safe travels, Victor. I'll see you when you get back. There we go. Fahrenheit is the only better Imperial system because room temperature is 69. Nice. Yeah, and like, I don't know, it, it like... Celsius makes sense, you know, because zero is freezing and 100 is boiling. That's a nice, normal, easy round number, right? Whistling strip. Chamber of Rule. Uh, yeah. Is Victor the original character Joe went through Final Fantasy with? Yes, it is. He, he wasn't always named Victor Quibbles, though. I think I named him Rat's original name was Yanarin Vay Quib Quib, or Yanarin Quib Quib. I even named him Joseph Joe Cat at one point.
Have you seen the New York taxi driver videos on metric? No? Greetings, sir. This is the reservation counter for passengers traveling to Limza Liminza. If I'm not mistaken, you are the Flame General's envoy, Victor Quibbles, yes? High Winds uh, Skyways is at your service. Will you be flying with us today? Yep. His French video is even funnier. All right, awesome. Look at all these people going to the airship. Oh, dude, we got a Garlean in our midst. What the heck? Board the airship. Oh, whoops. And now it's suddenly daytime. <laughs> because they want you to see it in daytime. Attention all passengers. The airship bound for Limsa Liminza is about to depart. Please make your way to the boarding gate. Look at me. Yeah, a little smirk. <laughs> Look at the people arguing to get on the airship. No seats on this? Man, that must be very wobbly to stand on. It's Mamodi. Oh, Papa Sean and the Dr Mario. Oh, it's everybody we helped out. Yeah, and this is the prelude of Final Fantasy. They play this whenever you finally open up the world and like, and start the game. It's a running tradition. When we first met beneath the Sultan Tree, I sensed there was something unusual about him. I wonder if this will feel the same. Godspeed, Victor! Godspeed! If I'm right, they'll be singing your praises from here to f Fair Reach, Far Reach before long. May you always walk in the light of the crystal. Ah, oh, and uh, Wymond is here too. Even Wymond. Wow, it's everybody. That's cool. No, sorry, not prelude, the prologue, whatever. And here we go. Star Wars time. Meanwhile. Oh, this is, this is pre-rendered. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a lot of compression in this video. This is a pre-rendered video. Interesting. It has been 15 years, but the bitter taste of defeat lingers still. Yeah, video compression. I guess so they can smoothly transition to this. set course for Mordona. Led by the Agrios, mightiest of all vessels. Totally not Darth Silver Vader, yeah. Lake lay ripe for the taking, and all of Eorzea would soon. Yeah, basically, be boss. What it is? They're playing an MP4 so file, essentially. This is a pre-rendered cutscene, including the one that looked like in-game graphics, which it wasn't. At the heart of Interesting the that they want to pre-render that part. Though we succeeded in slaying that lord among worms, the Dread Serpent's defeat was bought at too high a price. Even this sounds like fantasy babble, but this is lore, like important lore that will come up later. Like, Midgard Sormer destroyed their ship, but they also killed him, according to this narration. Yep, and then the load screen. Yeah, there we go. Was that cutscene new for New Game Plus? No, that was always there, I think. Eorzea, a blighted realm, riddled with false gods. Twice now it has eluded the Empire's grasp. For all the destruction it wrought, 
Even Meteor, the great sin, failed to yield us control over it. And for this failure, the realm has sunk deeper into depravity. I think it's a cutscene for peeps who start a new dawn. No, everyone gets that. Everyone gets that cutscene. It is twisted beyond all reckoning, rotten nigh to the core. Yet it must be saved. Only Garlean rule can bring order to Eorzea. It falls to us to deliver the misguided masses from their ignorance. Ah, fascism. We are of one mind, Lord Van Balzar. Yeah, I mean, he does have a little bit of a point. There's a lot of corruption and problems in Eorzea that do need fixing. He sees himself as, you know, and the Garlean Empire as the necessity needed to fix it. Hey, is the Legatus really planning to take another tilt at Eorzea? Uh, Garlean Empire's worse, so yeah. Well, just because they have a point doesn't mean they're right. Like, they, everyone is coming from somewhere. Everyone, except for a few, has, like, a reasonable, like, even if they're wrong, they have a motivation, for the most part, that you can think, like, yeah, I, I can see where you can come to that conclusion, right? And that's what's really nice about this game. Everyone has a reason, a... Even if it's evil, a motivation that you can kind of understand where they're getting at. Hey, what hole have you been hiding in? We're in the midst of preparing for a new campaign, and a huge one at that. And I like this. This is set up for Stormblood. But I thought the Emperor had given up the Western Lands for lost after Cartano. What could the Legatus possibly hope to gain by acting alone? I sense you harbor certain doubts over the wisdom of the Legatus' plan. No spoilers, chat. Uh, my, my lord! Please, call me Nero. Tell me, where were you born? He's kind of daddy, not gonna lie. Uh -huh, he absolutely Lord. is. I also love, he's one of my favorite villain characters. I love, I love Nero so much. Al amigo, my lord. Ah, codename Hummingway, I presume. I, I don't know what you. Yeah, Nero's voice is pretty nice. Silence, your denials will not change your fate. I assure you, Frumentarium sees all. Yeah, so I feel okay with explaining this because this is never visited back and only makes sense if you know the later story. And do not miss any. Essentially, he killed that guy because he was a spy. Yeah, the, the game was still rated T. So, no blood right now. At, at, at once, my lord. Yeah, that's why he was clueless about the campaign and he was asking questions, because he's a spy, he's trying to get info. Even though it is, it is to give the audience info, but it's also like, I'm a spy, I'm trying to get, you know, intel and all that shit. Ah, look, the Bakugan helmet. Garland. Soon you will be made to know the true power of Magitech. Here we go, land of the pirates. Here we are. Llama lasagna. 
Uh, there you go. Lisa Lamasa. Ligma Labigma. Must be the envoy. Yep. The RP Sanctuary. Hello. Envoy, welcome to Limza Lamenza. The Admiral has been looking forward to your arrival. Please proceed to the Crow's Lift at your earliest convenience. Oh, okay. Bulwark Hall. Wife, 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 wife. I must see my wife. Wife, 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 wife. Greetings, sir, and welcome to our fair city. If you would permit me to examine the seal on your missive that you carry. Here you go. Yes, everything seems to be in order. My apologies. We cannot afford to be complacent, you understand? Please step this way. Enter. Is Merlewib's VA the same? No, it sounds close, but it's not quite the same. I mean, it's not the same VA, and it, it's a little different, but the, she did a pretty good job of getting close. Like, Merlewib is one of the few voices in ARR that's still pretty good. Wife. So the silver-tongued merchant send an adventurer to speak for them. It appears the Uldans place great faith in you. Hold on. I need to I need to do something very very important. Um I need to see. Uh Uh Hold on. This is very very important. I need you guys to understand. No, that's not right. <laughs> is that one? How is it impossible to find a tra proper transparency? Damn it! No, no. Give me a bit. This will this will be worth it. I promise. So all be worth it. Fuck it. I'm just gonna have to like Photoshop it. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, shit. Give me, give me one second. It'll all be worth a chat. I promise. I promise. Yeah, just keep it on the screen forever. That's what we'll do. There we go. Yes, hello. This way. I bid you welcome. I am Melvi Blufisvin, Admiral of Limso Lominsa, and Commander of the Maelstrom. Now, what news from Thanalan? <laughs> Hmm. Admiral, hmm. a memorial service to honor the fallen. Seven hells. Has it been five years? Five years since the Galian Empire sought to wrest Eorzea from our grasp. It was in answer to the imperial threat that the city-states formed the Grand Companies and forged the Eorzean Alliance anew. But Garlemald was not content, content to wager all on a simple contest of marital might. They had other plans, the Meteor Project. I imagine while this is all going on, you just like... Just like... Victor. It's like in his... All he hears is... And then Victor's like, Oh my god, 
She's so tall. Because that's me. It was an answer to the Imperial. Yeah, yeah. Legatus Nail Vandanus, else take him, intended to cleanse our realm by snatching the lesser moon Dalamud from the heavens and casting it down upon our heads. Desperate to prevent this lunatic scheme, we marched our forces to Cardinal Flats, and there met the 7th Imperial Legion in battle. Never have I seen a fight like the Battle of Cardinal, and I've seen full many. But though we gave no quarter, spared not one dozen of effort, we could not prevent what followed. From the side... Inside the shell of Dalamud came a winged nightmare, a dragon the size of a bloody city. Twas the Elder Prime of Bahamut, bent on making an eighth hell of Eorzea. One second, I think I have messages. Because it's nearly time for me to do a thing. In the space of a breath, the legions of the Empire were set aflame, while our own armies fared little better. T'was as if the whole world was burning. Words cannot describe the scene. And yet, by some miracle, a few among us were spared. Even as I steeled myself for death, a blinding white light enveloped me, and robbed me of my senses. Wait, what? Uh, we we're unaware of the smashing the moon into the planet with destroyed, uh, you know, whole planet. You know, oceans and shit. Your engineers are stupid. Uh, they had other motives that we'll learn about. Uh, and also, it wasn't smashing the moon. It's more so bringing the moon down to summon the big evil monster thing. When I regained them, the dragon was gone, and still smoldering land was warped beyond all knowing. The Ar were Archon Louis Soir still with us, he would doubtless shed some light on these unfathomable happenings. Alas, he is not, and I fear we will want for his wisdom in the days to come. For while our nations struggled to recover from the devastation, the beastmen called forth their damned primals to torment us anew. There's nothing that would make it not stupid. Uh, it would if the laws of physics work differently in this world. Unless we put aside our differences and rebuild now, our fo foes will catch us unprepared. Which it does, by the way. <laughs> you know, there's magic and shit. Don't worry, we'll learn more about their, their motives and all that later. And I speak not only of the Beastmen. Do not imagine that the Empire has forsaken its claim to Eorzea. The Imperials crowd our borders, waiting to strike. Damn it all, we need champions to replace those we lost. Hold on, I need to do... There we go. Now it's perfect. But such thoughts are worse than worthless. Time is short, and no one will save us save ourselves. It is the duty of every soul who survived the Calamity to work together for the good of Eorzea. And this memorial service may be the very thing to unite us. Aye, Raoban has the right of it. I accept this proposal. Yep, invisible props. Low budget. Your duty is done here, adventurer. I will see to it that the Flame General receives my reply. You travel next to Gradania, yes? Is there anything anything you want to do now that we're alone? No? Okay. Pray give my regards to the Elder Seeds here. Oh, and tell her the wolf has been sniffling around the stables. A private jest and one in poor taste, but I would have you tell it all the same. Fare you well, Victor. May the Navigator guide you on your journey. Eee! 
Oh, I didn't actually go in the room, so I couldn't G-pose with her. All right. There is a New Game Plus, yeah. I'm surprised how many people don't know that there's a New Game Plus. Greetings, sir. This is the kind of the uh, Gridania, yep. Am I gonna put my armor back on when I need it? I'm in casual clothes right now, because I don't need any armor. I'm just visiting with people. Not really New Game Plus in the usual sense. Well, I guess what would you consider the usual sense of New Game Plus? Because I still have all my powers and gear and stuff. It sounds like New Game Plus to me. think New Game Plus is only if there's new stuff? I guess so. I mean, I guess that's something that New Game Plus can do, but it doesn't... I don't think that's a rule. Restart over from zero? No, I think, you know, plenty of New Game Pluses have you start with the equipment that you had before, like Persona, Dark Souls, um, Ratchet and Clank. Pretty sure Jack and Daxter, Bloodborne. Chrono Trigger, yeah. That's what the plus is for, you know? I, at least that's me. Uh, at least I, I consider that's what the plus means. Maybe it means different things for different people. I remember SMT does it that way. Yeah, there you go. Greetings, good sir. You wanna know the Iron Boy? Yep. To the Conjurer's Guild. As in start from zero with bonuses? Well, it can be. It can be that. But not always. I think there's a design doc about the various different ways you can do New Game Plus. Like uh, in Nier, for example, you keep all your weapons and upgrade chips, right? Uh, Contra skill. Oh, wait! I gotta show you the MILF! <laughs> nice to see so many sprouts. Yeah, it's nice to see a lot of people picking up the game. Mother Mion, best quest giver! <laughs> there she is! Look at her! Oh, I can't talk with her. Hello. Hi. Isn't she nice? She's sweet. She's good mom. Do you also keep story stuff in areas unlocked? Yeah. Like, I can just teleport. I can teleport to a Shadowbringers area right now if I wanted to. Damn, that loading, that quick loading. Bring your pardon, sir, but I'm, might I inspect the miss of you, Bear? Here you go. Verily, this is the seal of Supreme Commander of the Immortal Flames. Please come with me. This place is nice. So you are the Uldan Envoy. On behalf of our fair nation, I bid you welcome, please. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Khan A. Senna, Elder Seed Seer of Gridania, and leader of the Order of the Twin Adder. 
Our nation's grand company. Kane Sena in AR is not good. I wouldn't, yeah, I, I, would, I would say it's not bad either. It's just like serviceable. I think she's got the worst case of like long winded sentences that, you know, and you'll especially notice this when we visit every city to, to look at each grand company. I understand you bear a message from the flame general. What is your opinion of glowy weapons? They are, I guess it depends on which glowy weapon. Some I like, some I don't like. A remembrance service for the fallen of Cartano. Pray tell me, adventurer, what do you know of our conflict with the Empire? Uh, they... Oh. It would seem my counterparts recounted the tale in some detail. This is well. That is well. Well, they uh, kind of want to rule everything, and they think we're savages. Oh, yeah, your, your wolf pup. A message from the Admiral. A wolf has been sniffling around her stables, you say. I see. Well, I shall be pleased to provide her with s such counsel as I am able. I never learned what this means. This is clearly a code word. But I think when you start in Limza, you go to Ulda, and you say the same thing to Raubon. But I don't know what it means. The Black Wolf. Ah, right. So they know what Gaius is up to. Gotcha. Nice. Wow. There's a furry around, yeah. But first, friends of, friend of my friend, I would tell you more of the Galian threat. For the greater part of the, its history, Galamold was not even amongst the most influential nations in uh, Islabad, the northern continent. However, its innovations in the field of Magitech, some 50 years past, helped to raise it from the depths of obscurity. Emboldened by this technology, it set about subjugating its neighbors swiftly, absorbing each into its ever-expanding territory. And when all of Islabad lay within its grasp, it turned its ravenous gaze upon Eorzea. Yet Garlemald's transformation did not come about by virtue of Magitek alone. Its, succeed, its success owed much to the consummate leadership of its first and reigning emperor, Solus Zoscalvis, the man who built an empire in his own lifetime. Yet he has lived long, and after more than fourscore winters, it is said that he grows frail and even more prone to illness. If rumors are to be believed, the matter of succession has destabilized the imperial court. This would explain the empire's relative inactivity in recent years, which has granted as much needed time to rebuild. Yet we cannot allow ourselves to become complacent, for Garlemald still maintains a presence in Eorzea in the form of the 14th Imperial Legion. That's why it's called Final Fantasy XIV! Whoa! No, I'm just kidding. But it's, it's funny that 14 is a number that comes up a lot in this game. Uh, I don't think on purpose either. Commanding this great host is Legatus Gaius van Balsar, a man whose ambitions are well known to us. So long as he breathes Eorzean air, none of us may sleep easy. The calamity wrecked such devastation upon the realm that it has been all we could do to nurse our wounds. Never mind rebuild our defenses. Simply put, we have not the strength to repel the Empire. No, not yet. Not yet, chat. Not yet. It's not time for devastation yet. We'll get there. We'll, we will get there. It's not yet. To add up to our woes, the beast tribes continue to summon their primals, whose very existence is a bane upon the land. Each nation is beset with its own primal problem. None has the resources to look beyond its own borders. The Admiral desires my counsel regarding a brazen wolf. She means to tell me that the Empire may soon resume its advance. Though the primals pose an undeniable threat to our survival, the threat posed by the Garleans is greater still. Clearly, each nation can no longer afford to think of only one, uh, only of that which occurs within its own borders. A storm gathers upon the horizon, 
If we are to weather it, we must needs stand united once more. A remembrance service may help to rekindle the spirits of unity which brought the people of Eorzea together when last the Empire threatened our liberty. Uh, wait, the furries are summoning gods like Bahamut? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, all the time. So we have to divide our attention between the creatures summoning their gods to fight us and the Garlean Empire trying to fash uh, uh, fascist us to death. The Flame General was wise to make this his proposal, and I wholeheartedly approve of it. The necessary provisions shall be made for service here in Gridania. What are you writing on? I see no table. Oh, there's a table. And the invisible parchment. <laughs> no, they're not even hiding it this time. <laughs> like the other ones, they were they did different ang camera angles so you wouldn't see what they're holding, but not this time, I guess. Your work here is done, my friend. I shall send my reply to the Flame General forthwith. I thank you for coming. May the Twelve see you safely home. Alright. We now use the airship routes. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, how close am I to finishing this New Game Plus segment? Um, because I have a thing soon. Let's see. How many more quests? This is the last one? Okay, awesome. I pray your meeting with the Elder Seed Seer went well, my Lord Envoy. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but did you not also deliver a message to Admiral Merwib of Limsa Lominsa? Whoa! Be Mac, Mac and Cheese 13. Thanks for gifting five subs. Thank you. This is the first quest to align everyone. Awesome. While you were there, did you happen to meet Bataron, the proprietor of the Drowning Wench? Uh gregarious gentleman. I always always happy for his fellow uh, always happy to help his fellow man. 